they're all up there. They have the capacity at the moment. They have the capability at the moment. And one of our big concerns for the future, if these, if these jobs that are coming up are not given sort of fair allocation to these smaller contractors who don't have the ability to tender in their own right, is that we'll lose the capacity and the capability from our community. And I mean, I heard on the radio this morning, um, Mayor Klein was talking about the, um, was it, um, the earthquake, the um, Alpine 8, whatever, I can't remember what it's called, but the, the road choking went through. And how all the agencies had to work together and plan for it. Well, planning ahead, we need to support our local businesses and contractors to make sure that we haven't degraded the capacity, capacity that we have within our community um, to actually help ourselves when the time comes, because it won't be there. Um, the, yeah, the panel that is selecting these people, how have they actually asked those contractors what capacity they have or what capability they have available at the time? Have they approached them? That's a big question that I've got because what I'm hearing from people that I've talked to um, is that they've got it at the moment. They haven't got the work that's been that um, would sort of overload them or anything. And I mean, an example of that, I mean, up in our own community, um, our contractor normally would have two 20 tonne excavators up there. I think we've got four trucks. Um, at the moment, they've got one seven tonne digger and one truck based in Caramere. They're chasing around the Buller trying to find work. And they cannot rely on the farming community to give them the work that they're used to. These smaller jobs, we were told they're smaller jobs earlier on, that's why they can be given out as part of the um, negotiated tendering process, they've already been handed out. Um, I can't remember the man who was over here, Steve, um, can't remember his name, he said before that they would have the opportunity to subcontract to these other ones who've got those jobs. The reason those businesses were approached was because they have the capability and capacity, but but, and so they won't have to approach the small contractors in the district. With this process, there's an opportunity for buller contractors and buller businesses to attract to take quite a decent cut of money out of it. Of course, 16 million or something buller wide. Um, why, why can there not be some waiting to support buller businesses? Thanks, Brian. Um, yep. Thumbs up. Time, yes. cool. Thank you. Jesse. Good afternoon, Fuller District Councillors and staff, Mayor Klein. I'm Jesse Creedmore, Kamea Community Coordinator. I'll talk fast. In Kamea, we've recently begun reviewing and revising our community plan. There's been many ways to engage online questionnaire, drop ins, and a public meeting held recently. With far higher attendance than expected, we're a very diverse mix of highly engaged community members workshop together productively. The process is still underway. Already, 127 people out of our tiny little community have actively participated with more feedback coming in. We're asking our community six questions, which has already resulted in over 13,000 words of well thought out answers. Now, 65% of all answers to date mention concern relating to the Bluff Road access state of it. So this impacts on the well-being of our community. One question we ask in the planning process is, looking ahead, what's our next priority out of environmental, economic, social and health well-being, or vulnerability and, resi and resilience? Vulnerability and resilience is racing ahead by lengths, followed by economic well-being, which is why we're here today. We have seen Council's project allocation and tendering matrix relating to approximately $16 million worth of works across Buller 
And while the matrix itself, and we've just uh, had the workshop, um, possibly very fair and equitable system, based on the information available to us, we are deeply concerned that this system, one, doesn't take into account our very unique and highly vulnerable situation in Kanami, and two, on the face of it, seems to be negatively impacting on the entire Buller region economically. And like they say, if you want a business here tomorrow, support it today. Surely a local company, particularly council's own <coughs> construction company, should have the opportunity to tender for that company to say whether they can or can't do the work, as has worked to date, along with the range of all the other local subcontractors. For about 25 years, Caramere has had the peace of mind and highly valued service of local contractors clearing slips on the road with just a phone call. There's also been considerable positive economic impact simply by having them as a local business, spending locally in our shops, local sponsorships, and involvement in all community activities. As you will know, our economy, economy has been severely impacted in quick succession by COVID, followed closely by the still closed TV track, resulting in a 70% occupancy drop for many of our operators. Then the still ongoing Operara Basin roading issues, but we have at least been able to rely on the local contractors' availability, allowing other economic activity. Last year, when the storm saw the bluff become impassable, many thousands of litres of dairy farm milk had to be dumped as tankers couldn't get through. But Westport and Karamea roading contractors working together on each side produced solutions that allowed the tankers to get through, saving further detrimental economic impact. I'm confident this goes without saying for all of Buller and not just Karamea, the need for prioritising local business, particularly those as significant as long-term, great track record, locally-based civil construction motor companies, and the need to consider how essential businesses like this can survive, not just today, but sustainably into the future. We believe the outcome, the ultimate impact of this tendering system could put at risk any resilience measures we can try to implement as a community. What we're seeking from Council, from Willow District Council, so please review this tendering matrix and clarify it for us, some of those weighted attributes that we talked about, and is there consideration and prioritisation for local providers and a weighted attribute for a community's well-being and resilience long term? Is there a clear understanding of any detriment to your local ratepayers by not prioritising Council's own civil construction maintenance company? On the facts available to us, this seems to represent a significant loss and lost opportunity for Willow. If given the opportunity, could this type and width of work increase local companies' experience and capability in order to deal with more damage by adverse events that we're being told all the time to expect, such as the Alpine fault earthquake? And we also ask you please to consider all of the factors that aren't visible in the spreadsheet matrix, like what companies will be sponsoring local kids' sports teams and all the other events and activities into the future. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you did very well there, and I forgot. I omitted to offer the opportunity for questions from councillors, so both on the same topic. So, councillors, either of those first speakers, any questions for clarity? Nope. Thank you. So the way this works, um, we discuss public forum at the end of our meeting, um, so that'll be few hours, I suspect, and you'll get a written um, response back from us. Okay, so next um, we will do, um, is who's ready? Is Alan ready? Not quite, okay, let's do um, Vern. Vern and Wendy, either or. Okay. <laughs> So I'd just like to start by saying I actually don't really know why I'm here today. And this is because I'm seeking a commitment from Council to follow through on actions that I believe were actually committed to in the 2022-23 annual plan process. In 2020 and 2011, two heavy transport bypass routes through Westport were established. There was the Brown, Demet, Mill and Palmerston Street route towards Northern Waller, and the Palmerston, Queen and Mill Streets for the inland route to the Nine Mile. These routes align with the District Council's district plan, which labelled Mill and Queen Streets as arterial, arterial and collective routes, respectively. However, the signage placed on our local streets only related to the northbound traffic and not to the inland route, 
and many large trucks still use Menzies and Roebuck streets as a shortcut to the Nine Mile or Stafford Street. These vehicles carry heavy loads past our homes. They are disproportionately large to our small residential street. They're noisy and intrusive. They vibrate our homes and rattle our china. They pose a risk to the safety of pedestrians, cyclists, and other motorists. Last year, my partner Tony and I lodged a submission to the annual plan, along with submissions from some of our neighbours. This was because of the number of truck and trailer units that continue to use Roebuck Street. We asked the council to restrict this transport from using Roebuck Street as part of the reading program. We also asked for there to be clear signage to move trucks away from Lindsay's and Roebuck Streets. In July 2022, I received this letter. And it stated signs will be changed accordingly and an order undertaken to ensure that suitable measures are in place. The notification has been issued to transport companies requesting that drivers only use set routes. Council also agreed to the trial of some traffic calming measures. That letter seems to reasonably reflect the minutes of the deliberation meetings, which noted with acknowledgement of the issue. Council will encourage review of signage and updated order of traffic. A trial of traffic time <coughs> and traffic impact and report back to Council. Also, direct communication with local transport companies to seek the preferred and recommended routes. Since last July, Tony and I have been very disappointed with the progress made by Council staff on this matter. The signs installed are not clear, especially from the Bullet Bridge direction, and are either not seen by drivers or misinterpreted as relating to the northbound bypass only. In my interactions with staff, I've been required to relitigate the issues that we raised at the annual plan about the trucks going past our home, and commitments made in January about engagement over signage and information sharing that have not been followed through. Although we continue to experience heavy transport vehicle through traffic, staff are not following the council direction to trial physical works to restrict their access. The report table today states that strategic states that signage is clear, but this has not been the feedback that we've received from truck drivers. The average speed along Roebuck Street is lower than 50 kilometres per hour. But this does not align with the overall issue we have asked to be resolved, which is to remove the overall disturbance to residents caused by the heavy transport traffic. A recent network survey did not indicate any substrate failures of Roebuck Street, yet there is no data provided about the scope methodology in the results of the survey. Any improvements will be exclusively funded by rates. However, Council's review and financing policy lists small funding options for work of this nature. The report also contains extensive traffic count data and analysis from three time periods. Basically, these tables show that average heavy transport traffic has fluctuated at all data measurement sites over time. It also shows that Queen Street has more heavy transport traffic, which is appropriate as this is the bypass road. It also outlines that traffic volumes would decline overnight, which is what you really expect. And there's some comparison to traffic ratios from Reefton, and I don't really understand the relevance of that. I also consider the com comment about any work undertaken at Roebuck Street unnecessarily sets precedence is unsubstantiated. There is a long established bypass route. It exists to divert heavy transport traffic away from Menzies and Roebuck Street, but we still have an average of 25 trucks a day on Roebuck Street. Resetting the street will not improve the substrate, reduce the horizontal vibrations, or the intrusive noise of large trucks going by. And I ask that Council please use the measures outlined in the traffic management and control section of this report on page 37 to restrict heavy transport through traffic from using Roebuck and Lindsay Street as a shortcut to and from the Bullard Bridge in Queen Street. And would you please also consult with the submitters to the annual planning about these installations? Thanks, Wendy. Any questions for Wendy before she sits down? Oh, 
Councillor Graff. Which one do you know? Is it just a few individual transport companies that are using it, or is it many? Um, it's a variety. Um, we do get like pieces, it's been Johnson Brothers, this is a history that's coming down, um, then we're going to do a step forward of us, and we're also going to get out of town um, transport op operators, so a um, lot of still come through. But we have different drivers, so um, the next one doesn't know. Um, and, and also, I think it's just moving target too because different out of town operators come at different times. There's also that fuel stop down at Johnson's Brothers, so some are heading there per se rather than actually to a, a a specific drop-off or something like that, the nine mile. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Wendy. Yeah. Ben Wishart, please. Hi. Um, I can just add a little bit to your, your question. Um, as I'm living on the street and retired, <coughs> I can see the trucks. I've actually printed off um, the bypass route from the council official one. I've printed it off, uh, the, the letter goes with it, I stop the trucks that go through and give them the letter and say, well, this is where you're supposed to be going. And the truck drivers are saying, oh, well, we, we, don't, we think that the bypass is to go through town. We want to go to Johnson Brothers to this fuel stop to dump wine or whatever they want to do. Uh, cattle trucks, even the dairy tankers used to do this. They say, well, there's no sign saying we can't use the street. But we're not willing to go north, so we're not going to travel on the bypass. So I said, they're quite good about it. So I said, well, no, the street's compromised with, since the flooding. We get a lot of vibration and stuff, and the water table's low there, all the houses up. The street was built, pushed over too far to the swampy area of town, because the big swamp runs right through the domain there, because we did the road. So that was fine. He said, well, we, 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 we appreciate that. We understand your, your plight. Um, and I say, well, just keep finding the bypass and go down to Mill Street and you'll see the turn off to Queen Street, say nine miles. Oh, good, fine. Then you get the drivers change over. They're not the same drivers. You get a different driver. He comes in. I stopped them. Some of them are great. They've all been pretty good, except for a few local drivers that have used the street for years and refuse not to um, go any other way. They just, they just, I've got names in here, but I won't say at the moment. Um, and of course, um, that's fine. So when I had a meeting with Mike and Rachel, I was mainly a few months ago, we discussed the matter, and Mike was um, going to contact me on feedback from the truckies and where to put signs. So the truckies said that there was a sign, as you come off the bridge, you've got the first sign bypass, but the second sign's just gone in. That's worded wrong. It just says carry on bypass which they already are doing if they're going north. Menzies Street straight there. So they, oh, we're going up the line, we'll go that way. They said, if we had a sign that said, um, heavy traffic bypass, nine mile turn off 600 metres. They would think, oh, I can get to the nine mile this way. I'll travel first, go through the North Street. There's a sign, up Queen Street, very simple. It's only had that sign change on the post that's already been put in. Um, and Queen Street end, the traffic coming through from north through from Sargent's Hill, uh, some different drivers can carry me or wherever, if they haven't they'll come back a different way to fuel up at Johnson's, they come back through, they head down at the side of the um, coming <coughs> this the west, they come along um, Queen Street, um, they see the sign at the corner home, oh yeah, keep going. It says it's nearly a kilometre away. They can't see the other sign, but it's so far away. It says 800 metres, I think. And they decide, oh, well, we know where we're going. We know the road. So we're just going to turn down Roebuck Street. So what we need is another sign. The same sign that's been put up, the second sign by the bridge, needs to be changed, shifted away, and put on Queen Street on the grass bridge before you get to Roebuck Street, carry on through. And they'll think, well, I can't turn here because it says carry on to bypass. It's basically a simple short term fix. It's not costly for the council. It's going to make a big difference with the truck driver's feedback saying that they will abide by, by that. And then the new drivers that come in, the GPS is going to turn them down into Menzies Street um, 
they also will just try to provide the GPS to carry on, so it's going to carry on and get there this way. Um, oh, the, the new councillors, um, the condition of the road is, uh, uh, I'm very much sure. we, we actually upgraded the road in 1980. And when we dug down into that street to upgrade it, we upgraded it to a, to a standard of a normal street in town. Not every bypass street was nothing to do with the city. The, the plan said to move the street right over to the, to the, to the left hand side because it's going towards the bridge. So the grass verge disappeared. There was no buffer zone for the house vibrations at all. Um, the street goes right past as a main tra traffic um, corridor is right next to the footpath, basically. Um, so what's happening since then? It only had trucks in 1980 weighing about 12 tonnes. Now we've got 40 and 50 tonne trucks. And of course, with the flooding, that's the low side of the street. When we dug down, there was water coming up through the silt and sand underneath the road. The road surface is fine on top, but it still moves, it still vibrates. And of course, what happens is um, it doesn't matter how the road surface is or who, who drives along, thinks it's fine. They need to do a vibration test in the houses and find out the vibration. Lucy's here, she's in one of the houses. Fix my cracks in here if you want to, everybody. <laughs> and, and of course, her, her, um, her house is cracking in the plaster inside the house since the flood because it's very wet. And the heavy rain, all those sections on the left hand side of the roads closest to all flood, and it takes ages for the water to run away with their front lawns. Now, one of the reasons this too makes it even worse the houses that have been bought <laughs> the um, And that's the high side to build those houses behind them in a swamp. There's always a big swamp through there. <coughs> and of course, they're close to the footpath, the road's been brought closer to the footpath, and it's just not acceptable. We have heavy traffic, 50 tonne trucks and trailers, and sheep trucks and, yeah. and line trucks of that size going down. Okay. Thank you. Any questions? I've got one question. Yep. Um, the trackers that you've stopped and you've told them where the bypass is and that yes. the very resistant to it, and I keep going down about that street. What do you think will change their minds? Because well, they probably won't agree to that. Yeah, that's, that's right. What happens if you see trucks going down there that are not riding by the rule enough trucks leave them? Why, why am I going this way? No, so why am I going to the bypass? Why can't I just take a shortcut for another truck? What's going to make them change their path? That process, maybe. What's it? What will make those truckies change their path? And they've always gone down there for 30 years. What's going to change it's Because that? I've explained to them every time I don't just get the right to the structure. Oh, okay. The structure will stop. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's uh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Righto. Thank you. Um, Alan, you're up next. I think Gina's getting a presentation ready for you. Feel free to start. No? Alan Donaldson. No, 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 no. The reason that I'm here today is I'm here so I can save our local council and our town a lot of money. I've looked into this a lot. I'm going to talk about to clarify why we need pipe into the northern branch in the Yarraway River concerning our water. Now, I've been up there a lot, taken a lot of photos, and the map in here. That side, have a good look at it. Make sure you read the, read the wording on it. Now, so the main reason is I actually spoke to Mike Duff about this and he agreed, but there was no funding. It's a very serious issue. It saved a lot of time and money. Also, I spoke to that gentleman, that gentleman and another guy, and they agreed they're on the same page as me. Hope they read the same book. Yeah, this is the northern branch of the RRA. This is what has happened up here. The flood did a lot of damage in our town, but it actually did us a favor in the northern branch, the RRA River, right at the base of Mount Rockford. It blew all the debris away and took us right down to Bedlam. So now we have a water supply, which we had probably 100 years ago with the old fellas. They run a water race from here. All the way around, you can see on that map, all the way around into the southern branch, we had more water coming because of what they had actually done. 
This water was really, really good. It's as good as what you get here off the southern branch. And also, because all the debris has been washed away, it's what they call bare rock. So we clean it. I can assure you that the North Branch isn't new to council. There's been um, some talk about that in the mix of the plans and the additional investment. As you say, it's come down to money and funding it and weighing up the risk and reward of adding that in. But like I say, things are changing all the time up there. So it might be worth revisiting. Well, from where I was the other day, it sure looks damn to me. If you saw the water and you drank it, and some of those photos, if you can get them, I will get them and I'll, I'll get them sorted and I'll send it around to the council. They did it for us and they had more water. Yeah. Good. And it goes, it goes all the way down that new pipe we got now. So there's no yeah. leaks. So yeah. it's right in there. Question yeah. from Councillor Naylor. Yeah, have you been up the South Front? Yep. Okay. Yeah, I've spent a long time up there, years, years yeah. and years. Recently, have you been up recently? I've been in so far. Um, you see, those areas. In the depression, they were water blasted, water cannons for gold. Then the war come and the men went. So that's why a lot of them all look heaps of stones and everything are down there and they, they interfere with the main structure of mountains. So you've got a lot of shit coming down. In one of the tributaries in the southern branch, or Giles's Creek as it's called, there's quite clean water, it's not affected as much. That one in the southern part of the other southern branch, that will actually settle down. Nature does things like in cycles. It thrashes the shit out of nature, then it regrows like the, like the slip up in 1968 earthquake. Yeah. There's a lot of trees on it, right? It'll regrow back. We've got a very good opportunity now to hit the northern branch. It will work. It'll be cheaper than, well, what have we talked about? It's tax free 14.7 million. I don't believe that's right. Thank you. Thanks very much. No other questions. Thank you. Um, Alan, next we'll do um, 
Check. Uh, yep, yep. Check, big right. Check, Colin. Thanks for your time. Thanks, Helen. Thanks, Helen. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor and councillors, for allowing me to speak to you, which is a bit of a change. Um, I'm speaking to you today as a committee member of the Billy Gray Power Group. Um, on that group, I'm actually the treasurer for Billy Gray Power, and it concerns us a wee bit about the housing that the Bullard District Council has. Um, the housing for elderly is not a core business of council. However, there is a need for, for housing for some elderly community members. Looking after the community elder citizens should be a core business for council. Some units have been in council ownership for over 40 years. During this time, the rentals paid would have covered the original cost of the units. To sell off the units will result in market rents, rental rates being charged, keep the council ownership of the units as they do not owe the council any money. A good part of the current rental income can be used for the required maintenance of the units. Um, some of our great power members are actually in the units and I've spoken to some of them and they are very concerned that they suddenly going to have to find some extra money uh, to meet the uh, Thank you very much for considering the fact that the council should retain ownership without the rentals being increased and the need for maintenance being built in to the rental amount and money allocated from the rentals to cover the maintenance. Thank you. Thanks, um, Jack. I'll just I'll just um, try and put your mind at ease a little bit in the sense that we acknowledge that the residents of these units are often some of our most um, vulnerable. And, um, and that there'll be no immediate decision to change or, or um, alter their rent or level of service. It's about a, you know, it'll be a, it'll be a, a long process to work through what council's options are. Um, further to that, we're acknowledging that there is a need in the community. It's about whether or not, or is around whether or not council is the best people to be meeting that need. So if that gives you any comfort around where we're at in terms of decision making and timelines. Any questions, councillors? Councillor Nalon? Oh, yes, Jen, you, you started off by saying housing for the elderly is not a core business of council, and then you reiterated that it was a core business. So that original statement are not your words or not your words. You got that from? No, the the. The council has its base core businesses, yeah. but the elderly of the town and the district are vulnerable people and they do need the assistance to pay a rent that they can afford rather than <coughs> market rates. Yeah. So you're saying that housing for the elderly should be a core business of the council? For the vulnerable. Okay, thank you. Not <laughs> Any other questions, councillors? All right, thanks, Jack. Good to have you step up to speak to us, regular um, watcher in the public forum. So thank you very much. Okay, final public forum, I believe, <coughs> is um, Mr. Graham Howard. I uh, approached you some time back about the uh, conflicts of Punicoyton. 
shall not take an interest in it and make a claim for ownership of it. I see now that the government has allocated almost another $15 million for so hopefully the completion of it. And I'm here to ask council, and I know there's a lot of ratepayers that feel the same, to put in a claim for at least half. This complex should be a money-making complex, and the ratepayers of the Buller District should benefit from it. It's in the district, and it's something that we have for the district. And if it's going to be a money-making complex, then it should be available, the funds should be available to the ratepayers of the district. And I'm asking council to look and request the government to gift them or gift the ratepayers of the district through the Buller District Council 50% of the value and income from that complex. I do ask you uh, sincerely on this because there's a lot of people in this town now that are suffering from high rates. The rates have just gone up and up and up and it's almost, well, we can do this here, we'll just get some more rates. So when you look at it, the council have really got no assets that bring in an income. All the holdings, we speak, is about the only one. I don't think there's anything financially profitable from the um, harbour at the moment, but the council should be looking at getting those assets that are bringing in funds. And this is one asset that um, obviously is going to be uh, revenue earning and should be bringing in funds for the ratepayers in the district. Councillors, I do ask you to consider and go ahead and request that 50, at least 50% 50 of this asset be granted to the people of Westport or the sorry, people of Buller District through Buller District Council. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Any questions? No? Thanks, Thank Graham. Right, thank you to our public forum speakers. We'll move now into the formal meeting. So just for those who didn't hear before, we deliberate on responses to all of the public forum at the end of our meeting tonight and you'll get a written um, response from me. Thank you, right, without further ado. I will declare the um, meeting of the Buller District Council uh, 31 May 2023 open at 4.15 p.m. and go straight to agenda item uh, number one, which is uh, apologies. Um, there is an apology I received from uh, Deputy Mayor Basher, who is en route from a, the North Island, I believe, and will be late. Um, he's endeavouring to be here for the latter part of our meeting. Are there any other apologies to note? Everyone else is here. So I'll move that apology be accepted. Can I have a seconder? Councillor Fala, all those in favour? Any against? That's carried unanimously. Um, members' interests, agenda item number two. Are there any? items on the agenda for which members wish to disclose a financial or non-financial interest. Pardon me. I have one to declare myself. I think it's in the Chief Executive Officer's report, the appointment to the Fuller Resilience Trust. Um, we will ensure that we take that resolution separately and I will leave the room for that. Are there any other declarations to declare? Okay, would someone like to move that one? Moved Councillor Grafton, seconded Councillor Weston. All those in favour? Any against? That's carried unanimously, thanks. Agenda item three is confirmation of the minutes um, from our meeting of the 26th of April. Are there any 
matters of correction for those minutes. Councillor Sampson. Uh, page 15, um, over the motion that was um, equal, it's got motion lost. I'm wondering what the right term for that would be. It certainly wasn't lost, and it wasn't won. Uh, no, it's lost. So it means that, that, that the resolution as written was lost because it was a draw. So the, yes, I mean, it's a draw, so the status quo, lost. well, the motion is lost because it wasn't won. It can't be a draw. It's a win or a loss. Mm -hmm. so, it's going to be drawn, not lost. No, it was lost. It was lost. It uh, be won. I, I did have that clarified okay. from my yep. mentor as well, so because I, I wasn't <laughs> sure. Anyway, yeah. yeah. Thanks. Um, did I see another hand pop up? Councillor, oh, okay, cool, yep. So votes that are lost, then the resolution that was on the table is is either won or lost. If it's lost, then the status quo remains, or there is no resolution, and we need to either suggest another one, or depending on what the matter was, the status quo remains. I noticed Grant put in a wee um, point there, but my Zoom dropped out, so I can actually give a report on that. Oh, yeah, froze. So can you just put in there that, that my Zoom dropped out? Yep, yeah, sure. Thanks. That was on the, um, oh, yeah, on the verbal updates. Yeah. I'm happy with that. Any other amendments? Somebody want to move them on that basis? Moved. Councillor O'Keefe seconded. Councillor Grafton. Any further discussion? All those in favour? Any against? Carried unanimously. You okay there, Councillor Hill? Yes, I can't. Oh, okay. So an abstention then from Councillor Howard. I was wondering why you went voting. <laughs> okay, that's cool. Agenda item um, four is the council action point list. And there are no outstanding action points. So I'll move that we receive that or we'll note that. Seconded Councillor Nail on. Any, all those in favour? Any against? That's carried unanimously. Right, agenda item five is the heavy traffic bypass paper. Um, as we heard from the public forum, there's some public interest in this one. Mike, want to talk to the paper, please? Cool. Thank you again, um, councillors. Um, I'll just take it that um, this has been read by all councillors and you have a reasonable understanding of this. Let me all answer any of the questions. The key thing to this is that we're asking um, for this paper to be noted. Um, we brought it back to council because um, it was suggested way last year that we come back to this. We were waiting on traffic council to happen. That has now been undertaken. Um, we've got some of the results in there. There is a whole lot of other data that just um, Pop the computers up just if you want to have a read of it, um, it can be made available to you. Um, and we're also asking that um, Council approves the continuation of, of the methods that we're undertaking at the moment, um, but we're open for any questions. Thanks, Mike. So I'll start with the first one. Is there any um, change or, or it's been suggested some wording changes to the signage and things like that? Is that something that we're looking at or are we happy with what's there? Councillor Fowler. How much would it cost to redo those two sites that we talked about today? Uh, Twenty five hundred dollars a song. Any other questions on that, Councillor Grafton? So, um, what? How often are these companies like? 
obviously most people know what the companies are, how often are they talk to email and spoken to about. Like to say that it's different drivers and they don't know, and I'd be surprised if that's actual. They just can't bond. So how often are the milk companies, Johnson Brothers, blah blah, notified? There's a main winner that can follow that one. Councillor Nalon. Just to follow up there, um, you know, so what, what's the outcome of speaking to them? Are they in favour of not going down Menzies Roebuck or are they adamant that that's the route they want to use? They, they understand the directors is there and they should have to do the so just to clarify for me, you, you mean the, the bypass that the, they want to stick to the bypass, so up down mill, down queen rather than through no the companies to turn around and see we are going to continue to take the, the shortcut. Okay. Because because I know in the past um, when I was on the council before. Westland Milk Products, the, the transport manager said, well, you know, it's extra money if I go that extra distance around, but so he's changed his mind. Yeah, there is new staff in those roles and the positive working relationship being on the special yeah. needs, so yeah. you know, just people taking that yeah. Occasionally, you could be drivers in that operation coming from Canterbury to fill so what I'm hearing is that we don't as a council need to do any more on this because the transport operators are all following the correct bypass. Not all operators are following the bypasses. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's just a continuation of, of the management processes that they're taking, and that's addressing the, the, the trucking companies when they come to our, our port to our notice. It's continually re looking at the signage um, and looking at any other opportunities that we can do to, to convince and to help them go on the, on the, on the bypass route, remembering that they are road users. And they also have the ability, we don't have a viable to stop them to do what they some of them do, but we try and work with them to continually educate them that it's best practice to, to use our living bypass uh, roads. Councillor Grafton. Uh, and saying that, as Graham was alluded to, like going by the figures, what's been done so far hasn't really achieved anything. It's dropped a little bit the usage of it, but obviously, if you keep doing what is proposed, there's not going to be a lot of change. So, what's what's the alternative? Because it needs to be an alternative. I mean, people's houses are falling to pieces because vehicles are just taking a shortcut. So, they're just going to keep taking a shortcut unless they don't know. But as I say, going by the figures, Spending money on road signs and that doesn't seem to challenge the heck of a lot. It's minimal. The other things that are available to us is that we started to make that have a non trafficable area. Um, we also look at um, traffic carving is not a solution for us. Traffic carving is about taking the speeds down, it's not about tearing people from going down those routes. What it can do and what we could do is create more noise and more, more trucks just taking that route as well because it's a, it's a soft route for them. 
modest this education, but the only thing we can continue to do benefit for, for everybody is education, apart from the going down the bypass, uh, the viable route of turning those um, roads into non trackable air track roads, and that's a long process to go down. And Councillor Nail. Can I ask um, our CE by acting CE um, in terms of enforcement? You know, you have a bylaw. What what sort of enforcement do you need to actually make sure that trucks don't go down? That's a very good question. So, yeah, looking into this recently, I can see that there's some measures that are trying to put in place, and, and certainly that engagement that you've heard about. And that's that um, having a chat to them in terms of a stick, I don't see much. And I guess that would come in the form of a bylaw to actually definitively say, don't go down here. And then, as you point out, um, then the act of policing of that bylaw. Um, I guess in one particular area, it might be achievable. It would certainly get difficult depending on the scope of that bylaw. And if it started to list other roads, other problems, then you could end in a position where you do have a bylaw and, and maybe not the resources to effectively police it. Councillor Reedy. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I've got about three or four inches in the line, please. Mm, I'll see. Okay. Uh, I read through the, uh, we're looking at page 28. Um, page 28, uh, uh, bottom, bottom paragraph, last sentence. Um, Reading the letters reminded all public transport operators to use the heavy traffic routes and avoid suburban roads. Um, I believe those letters were sent out for a couple of years, then they ceased, and I believe May this year was the first one that was sent out uh, for a couple of years. Am I correct to say that? I'm unsure the previous ones, but the main, the main one is um, for, for, for the other year. Okay. Um, Okay, thank you. Uh, the next one is uh, in terms of uh, and apologies here. Um, in terms of um, uh, traffic calming, and what have you? Uh, I, I, um, uh, I've driven that road a couple of times. Now, for a truck, heavy truck, or a truck and trailer, to be able to turn into Roebuck Street, they have to cross the centre line of Mersey Street. And when they turn into Roebuck, they've then got to go right up to the, uh, to the, to the uh, footpath, which uh, once again on the right side of the road. And I see a health and safety factor there, not only that, but also breaking the laws for crossing the, uh, the line. And I was there again this morning before I came this meeting. To make sure that I was uh, had the facts correct. The other one is we've got a um, some speed limits here, and these trucks supposedly are not going over the fifty. Well, that sounds all very well, but when you have a truck and trailer turning right into that uh, sorry left into Roebuck, they change down the first most probably. By the time they get to Queen Street, they'll be lucky if they have third gear. So therefore, they will, they will be averaging about. 35 to 40 kilometers per hour. So what is in here is really not helping me to make a decision because I've driven trucks. I know what it's like when you're driving a um, driving a truck. Now there's also mentioned about the annual report outside the annual plan. And uh, I can't find the reference in here at the moment, but when I go back to the uh, report which was referred to by a member of the public, uh, the, the council decided, the council also agreed to the trial of some traffic calming measures. Now, in here, in here, there's, there's no mention about it. Uh, it's just, uh, that traffic calming measure uh, isn't, necessary, isn't actually uh, mentioned. But uh, what I have heard is that well, we don't have the money for it, we haven't done the funding for it, or uh, what the party. Uh, hasn't funded that until the next round and so on and so forth. And that might be called the uh, county measure, I'm not sure. But regardless of that, a decision was made by council in May or June of last year. Uh, a letter was written back saying that there would be some trial. 
Now, I'm not aware of any trials being made. So, can I have some uh, clarification on this? Yep. Right. Yeah. So, traffic calming is about reducing speed. Part of the traffic calming process for, for our team was to take traffic counts to see and understand what the, the high speeds were to calm down. All of the speeds that have come back indicate that the average speed is under 40 kilometers or around 40 kilometers an hour, 45, 41. Are all under the 50 speed, 50 kilometer hour speed, which means we do not, you, you cannot put calming, traffic, traffic calming in because you're already calm below the speed limit. Traffic calming is to stop accidents, incidents about people being hurt. It's not about stopping vehicles from going down the road. So there was no need to install or look at any other traffic coming procedures. Didn't the decision in the annual plan also talk about a staff report back on their findings? That, that so that's essentially what this is. Yeah. yeah. So it's report back to check in. This is where we've got to decision time. Mm -hmm. Sorry, uh, my, the, the report back is probably received now, one year later. Okay. We just need later. Okay, that's fine. So let, let me go back in terms of the car, traffic car, and all right. Uh, what I'm hearing is that it's okay for these trucks and trailers to cross the centre line on Nancy Street and cross and turn into the right hand side lane of Rover to be able to uh, transit through uh, the Street. That's a different situation. That's, that's a traffic offence. It's not a road car. Offense. So traffic offences are done by different department from us. Our, our job was traffic car, traffic carning requirements for that road. We've done two lots of tests to see what the to, to ensure that they the first one was correct, the second one still reiterates that the first one is correct. Um, it comes back to the conclusion and that's the recommendation that is we keep the status quo as what we've got. There's no carning requirements needed. Um, I can't put something in that's not required. It's not going to achieve anything further. So, okay. Right, just says just here about um, vertical features like road humps. I'm sure Pearson's won't be going down there much. You put like humps down there, <laughs> or any of our other companies that will just stop going down there and use the actual proper bypass. Mike? Or we will get the opposite effect. The trucks will still continue to do that. The noise limits will become and read this with the effects of trucks supposedly vibrating the ground and creating problems for the houses mm -hmm. will increase tenfold. Yeah. Um, maybe. maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I mean, the, the, the situation is that traffic camera is about slowing the speed down, it's not about stopping people from using it. Mm -hmm. In the council's opinion, would clarifying the science make a difference? In council's opinion, would clarifying the science make a difference? It's like more education would help. Um, so for a thousand dollars, may as well just do it. Do we need to put a motion to the table? The, I'm happy to take. I'm happy that we get into the resolution when we go back to the signage and we start and we look at that. So. Well, I don't think you need to, though, do you? That, no, no, those sort, of, funny in our those sort of, of things are normal, are part of the package you've been working on. Well, our normal stuff. We've already put sides up as part of our normal team. I'm happy to do that. Councillor Howard? I'm following up the truck stop. I wonder if we could perhaps just put a, um, a, a sign or a the bypass roofs with the tower. Here is the meeting of another sign on the street from this one. There's a recent request from the New Republic. Also, pick up here and track the channels on the video. Councillor Reedy, last one. Last one, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Uh, just without clarifying the, uh, uh, the traffic events, so this is coming. I appreciate all of that. This has been brought to our attention. That there is an issue at Roebuck Street. So, uh, regardless of who's responsible for uh, the trucks turning into Roebuck and having to cross the city lines, there's a health and safety factor involved here. And I believe that we are involved with it, so we get about health and safety. 
So as a community, as BDC, we are responsible for the health and safety of community members. And I don't see us doing anything at the moment in terms of traffic, sorry, these trucks and trailers necessarily uh, crossing the centre line and the Menzies and then crossing the, uh, the centre line going right up to the footpath basically on the right hand side and then moving up to uh, uh, Glen Street. There's children who play in that area. The area does have children. Uh, then it's a cell story in New Zealand. Don't do anything until it's a casualty or a fatality, and then you go and do something. I don't buy that. This has been identified now for over a year, and I believe uh, so that should be looked at. And if you want to point the finger to the police because it's a traffic uh, matter, so be it. Thank you. Mike? No, I think that's the only opportunity that we have to make, make a difference is we can report to the police. I'm sorry, you're going to get me up for saying this, but if you've got a good way sign on the fact that um, you don't have, excuse me, and I know I'm not meant to speak, but I will. Well, you're not speaking, speaker. excuse me, thank you. And you don't need to put hands on the track. What did you finish? Sorry, yes. thanks, Councillor Nalon. Yeah, um, stole the words out of my mouth. Um, you know, what, what's needed to prevent right hand turns coming off the bridge into Menzies Street? In terms of you know heavy truck and trailer, there'd be some road furniture. I think you call it. Um, I do recall there was a time in my years coming to and from Westport that it was pretty near impossible to turn down Menzies Street at one stage. You could come out of Menzies Street, but you couldn't turn in. And the same at the other end of Roebuck off Queen Street. If we had some sort of road furniture there that made it difficult for a truck and trailer, of, as Councillor Reedy says, if they've got across the centre line to get around, well, let's put something in the centre line so they can't get around. Because it, it seems to me as though the signage isn't going to do any good. What we're doing in terms of talking to the transport companies not working, we need to do something that will work, because I don't think this, we can let this carry on. Correct me if I'm wrong, yes. part of this is we will have to go back to Kentucky and discuss this with them. We will put islands in, um, which is probably the obvious way of, of doing a non right turn um, into Easy Street because it's on the safe highway. So there's a whole lot of factors around that piece of um, safe highway anyway. Um, at the other end of Queen Street coming into Robert Street, I can't see what we would put in there that wouldn't. Inhibit not only trucks but also vehicles coming in and out of there as well. Um, apart from doing a no left turn, and then that would inhibit the, the locals as well. I think we'd be causing an, an additional problem for the community on top of their park and destroying the trucks going. That's what I say. What about just plain and simple, if you call it furniture or not, just some bollards? Along the centre line there, and I and it's a local road. Um, we do it on the local road rather than the state highway, and then NZTA wouldn't be um, involved. Distances is the matters the state highway. Part of the issue being if they get into those areas, then how do you get that? So if we allow them, if we if we were to leave the Carson Street off the bridge there, if we were to leave that and they get in there, then how does it get out? I only do it once. Okay. <coughs> Normally our furniture would look the street furniture would damage during those processes. Um, when just all the ones in that's what normally happens in those in this. I wouldn't have been signed simply like that. Right, I hope we won't lose, lose the quorum here. Um, so way forward, there's two recommendations on the on the books. Am I hearing someone wants to suggest something different? Councillor Hale? I'll move uh, one and um, two with the addition about um, addressing some of those signage. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's a move. It's just some wording. We'll just clarify what the motion is, and then I'll see if there's a seconder. So you're approving notes report one, that's fine. 
proves the continue, continuation of the current management practices of the heavy traffic bypass route, <laughs> the management of Roebuck Street, and and con and reviews wording of bypass signage or improves. Uh, Let's say including. Um, so approves the continuation of the current management practices of the heavy traffic bypass route, uh, including a review of the signage and management of Roebuck Street. And the management, just the rest of it. So that's moved and seconded. Everyone clear what that was? Put that. No, no. Explain the last bit. So just read the last bit back. Approves the continuation of, of the current management practices of the heavy traffic bypass route, including a review of the signage and the management of Roebuck Street. So is that a review of the management? Is that what we're talking about? Well, carrying on with it. With a the, review of the signage and the management. Yep. It's not really doing so is that a review of the management on Roebuck Street? Yep. But then that's going against the continuation of the current management. Okay, so just different reading then. Put the review of the signage at the end of the sentence. Yeah. Okay. So as written, just review and a review of the current signage. Existing. Existing signage. Existing. At the end. Is that all right? Councillor Reedy. Uh, uh, I still believe that. Um, is still the factor of health and safety. Uh, we know as if they're crossing the uh, single line, which is a uh, traffic offence, but I'm still concerned about the health and safety. As a result of that, I believe it should be put in there. How do you want to address that? Uh, we've got, uh, at the moment, we've got one or two, and I'm not sure if we talked about it before. It was uh, part, of, um, part of two or part of three in terms of uh, maintaining current management. I'm just going to add signage onto the end of the two, but if so you want to introduce the uh, uh, consideration of uh, uh, the health and safety of the residents and users of Roebuck Street or uh, something like that, something like that line. So I'm not a I'm not a I can't say. I would suggest that the council are already actively doing that. It's not yeah. their council yeah. obligations. It's a management. So that's not a new resolution. That's something they're doing every day. They're considering the health and safety of um, Okay, just uh, let's just park that one at the yeah. moment. Um, let's deal with one and two. Yeah. So we're adding on signage. So it's as written. Yep. And, plus and a review of the signage. Simple as that. Right <laughs> <laughs> back straight and review. Happy with that mover? Happy with that seconder? That's no, Joe was that's moved and seconded. All those in favour of one and two. Okay. So I'll just clarify. we we've had a mover and a seconder for one, note the contents of the report, and two, approving the continuation of the current management practices of the heavy traffic bypass route and the management of Roebuck Street and a review of existing signage. Been moved and seconded. All those in favour? Hands up, please. Three, four, five. Um, no, Councillor Webb, no. So five, four. And against. Those against. One, two, three, four, four. five. So that's a tie. First four. Oh, on, on the screen. Councillor Sorry, Webb, missed that. Yep. So that's a tie. So that motion is lost. Does anyone wish to suggest an alternative? It's both of them lost. Yes. Can you break two? I'll, I'll move one. Okay. I'll see you in one. Noting the report. Okay. Motion seconded. All those in favour? 
Let's just get some runs on the board. Okay, <laughs> okay. So the one is just noting the report. Is unanimous. That's unanimous. Yep. Carried. Okay. So two failed. And someone yep. suggests an alternative wording that is not a direct negative. At the moment, the status quo remains, which is what the team have currently been doing. Councillor Sampson. Right, that the report comes back as to um, the management of the, um, what, the controls for health and safety of the um, road in the way of um, traffic furniture or bollards or something. So it's just because we haven't, we're, well, the signs have to stay in there, but we need to do more than just having signs. And the management to date, current management practices haven't addressed it properly, so we need to take it a step further and suggest what can okay. be done. How about we resolve then, because we have to turn it into something we can actually write down, we resolve okay. that the council um, requests staff to report back to council on additional measures to, to, to manage the health and safety that we ask council staff to bring a report back about how we get heavy traffic out of Benzies and Roebuck Street. Are you moving in? I'll move that. I'll well, just, I need the wording okay. first. <laughs> Graham is moving that council requests a report from staff on how heavy traffic can be excluded from Roebuck Street. Yep. Menzies and Roebuck. Yep. Menzies, Roebuck Street. Have you a seconder? Seconded Councillor Sampson. Any further, Councillor Weston, do you have a question a discussion on that? I mean, yeah, I totally disagree with putting by. What, what happens if somebody's dropping gear off? So you're going to say, right, no trucks are allowed in Roebuck Street or no trucks are allowed in Menzies Street. So by putting bollards in, you're going to stop people who are legally going to have to go down there and drop gear off or deliver gear or, or rock work or whatever. In, the, in those houses on the street, they're not driving through there, they're, they're delivering stuff. So, why, why put something in the way? You can't stop it. Well, so, that's, that's, right. Right. Well, hmm. that's why maybe the report needs to come back. Yeah. It may be bollards, as you could be wrong, probably not, but what the status quo is not working. Yeah, I know, all you need is a sign at the end, Roebuck Street. The signs are not working. Yeah, but there's not one at Okay, no, no, we're not doing so not doing across the table. We've got questions. Graham, you've moved it. Do you wish to speak to it as you've moved it? Or do you want to just do a write a reply at the end or write a reply? Thanks. Okay. Can we go to questions on that? So essentially it is just a resolution requesting staff to bring back a report on the exclusion of TV traffic from the Menzies Roebuck streets. Councillor Howard. I just don't think we'll get value of it because I think all these points are being answered at this meeting about why you wouldn't put bollards or restrictions. Um, we've talked about the bylaws and the cost, and, and so basically, all these things are going to come back and report have already been discussed. Uh, health and safety, someone's crossing the centre line of traffic events, there's nothing stopping you bringing up um, the police and reporting that events are, are happening. Um, we can do these measures. If further issues arise, um, you know, we need to brief them later. Um, doing things like we know the companies that may be using the roads, if we see a build up of that company using the road, we can do additional letters uh, other than the yearly letter. So I don't really feel we can address what's practical without taking up start time um, into doing another report. I think they've got better more valuable progress that we have to move on. So I take it you're against the motion. I'll go to Ned. Yep. We do not want to be involved in the police in this. Surely the faith that live around their place, and if like Colin was saying, um, that is be cutting corners for trucks around there, maybe it might pay the, the local police to sit someone around and have it to watch. 
Thanks, Ned. Councillor Farlock. I agree with Joe. I don't think this bringing asking for another report will add anything because I think that's what this report is. Um, but I would suggest maybe you kind of can have a chat with Waka Kotahi and see what they could potentially suggest at that corner and specifically. Okay, so I'm hearing two against. Is there anyone who wish to speak in favour of this motion as tabled? Okay, moving. Would you like your right of reply? Uh, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just in reply to um, you know the, the, this report is addressing the problem. Well, I guess to me it doesn't in, in terms of the uh, draft recommendation was approves the continuation of the current man management practices. Now we've heard from the residents today that in the last year those current management practices haven't resolve the problem that they've got there. So I guess what I'm asking for is a report that comes back that says, um, you know, what other measures other than continuing the current management practice are available to us to, to alleviate the problem. That may mean excluding um, heavy traffic from, from Roebuck Street, but it may, it may not because, you know, obviously Councillor Weston's pointed out that some trucks do need to go down there if houses are moving, et cetera, et cetera. But I guess what we're talking about here is truck and trailer units rather than trucks. And we heard, um, you know, when the road was first uh, built, the trucks were all around 12 tonne, now they're around 50 tonne. So I don't think people are gonna have a problem with a furniture truck going down there. Problem is these big um, fifty tonners, forty tonners. That that's where the real problem is. So I think we need a, a report back that says these are the ways we could exclude them by traffic management, if you like, in terms of, of um, you know something something at the intersection that prevents them from going down there, or we simply have to go um, down the if we have to go down the the, um, the bylaw route. Um, we need to have some sort of assurance that, um, you know, the, the, tra the, the transport companies are actually going to adhere to the bylaw or we'd have to have some sort of policing in place to make sure that they did. So I don't think that that's quite the answer, but I do think that there is, is a way of preventing them going down there and, and that might be simply no right-hand turn for heavy trucks coming off the Buller Bridge and no left-hand turn for heavy traffic coming down Queen Street onto Roebuck Street. I mean, you know, you see these signs and as long as they're white and red, then thou shalt not turn left. Um, you know, an information sign simply pointing out where the bypass is, the current bypass is, doesn't sort of carry the same way. It becomes a traffic infringement. As I understand it, if you, if you, um, you know, down the motorway in Christchurch, if you do a U-turn, and the sign says you can't do a U-turn, well, that's a traffic infringement. Simply not following the bypass is not a traffic <coughs> infringement. So there's, there's, I think there's some other ways than, than what's been pointed out in this report to actually deal with the problem. Because I think to say, well, you know, these residents have got to keep putting up with it, is, it doesn't wash with me. I mean, they've suffered for long enough in my, in, in my um, view, and we could do something about it quite easily with some signage or a little bit of road furniture. So I, I think we should vote in favour of that coming back. To say that it's taking up valuable time of the staff, well, um, I don't think any of the residents down Roebuck will, will tell us that this is um, a useless waste of time for council staff. <coughs> Thank you. That's been debated well, and that is the right of reply. I'll put it to the vote. All those in favour? Any, any against? So the motion is carried. Thank you. Got that? Cool. My apologies for my outburst, but thank you very much for listening to us. Thank you. Right, agenda item um, six is an application for road stopping.
Right, there's a few recommendations there. We will take the report as um, read. <coughs> Are there any questions out of the report before we look to the recommendations? Matter? Oh, sorry. Oh. Okay. Are there any questions out of the report for agenda item six? Okay. So the recommendations there are we agree to process the application by the owner of the property at Powerhouse Road to stop that portion of unformed legal road known as Deadman's Road in accordance with the provisions of the Local Government Act 1974 as requested. I'll move that way. Seconded. Deputy Mayor Basher. Any discussion on that? All those in favour? Any against? It's carried unanimously, noting uh, Councillor Reedy is mm -hmm. absent. Two, noting that the land is in a rural area, instruct the Chief Executive Officer on completion of a survey office plan of the road to be stopped to advise the Minister of Lands of the proposal and seek the consent of the Minister as required under Section 3421A, Local Government Act 1974. And might as well do this one together because they link. Instruct the Chief Executive Officer on receipt of consent from the Minister of Lands to undertake public consultation as required under Schedule 10 of the Local Government Act 1974. I'm happy to move, Mr Mayor, with the um, addition of Acting Chief Executive Officer. Yes, directing to, to the Acting Chief Executive on all counts. Moved. Um, I'm happy to second. Any discussion on that? All those in favour? Any against? That's carried unanimously. Thank you. All right, what else can we get done? <laughs> Agenda item seven. Housing for seniors. This one will take a bit of discussion, I suspect. Um, so do you want to talk to the paper at all? Anything you want to add? Um, I'll take the report as read. I will just add that this is something that's quite um, up close to one's heart. So I understand that um, a lot of councillors are really quite passionate about making sure that our seniors and our vulnerable seniors, especially, are looked after. Um, this is a long piece of work that council have been working on. Um, and I know that there was some frustrated previous councillors that this didn't get closed off previously. Um, we have got our current long term plan that the first three years we would operate and then we look at um, other operating models. The um, environment has changed substantially in the last couple of years with the floods. We've got um, other houses that may or may not be available to us soon. Um, we've lost some of our stock um, through a lease agreement. So there's quite a few different things that have happened. Without um, going into the paper in more detail, because you've got that in front of you, this paper is seeking some direction from council as to where you'd like some deep financial analysis. Um, there's some um, monetary figures towards the end of it, just as to how much that might look like per household, because as much as we are aware that these are vulnerable seniors in our, um, our community, we've also got um, we're very aware of, of the cost of living raising and we don't want to put up anything without absolute cause. Um, the last thing that I'd just say before I'm happy to take questions is that um, the working group is, um, has been looking at different options such as larger houses, um, senior sharing houses, because it could be good for their mental health um, as they get older. So there's been some quite good discussion around the table. Um, we'd really like to get some financial figures to council to discuss this further and hopefully come to that further model. One of the things that we've really found difficult is with central government not funding the capital upgrades of these um, houses and the accommodation for seniors, we just haven't had the ability to keep um, up with the repairs and maintenance as necessary. Um, so that's a big disadvantage that has been outlined in most of the options here. With the way that we've got things, not only can our tenants not apply for um, rental subsidies from WINS or other things like that, but council also cannot apply for subsidies for rents. 
So it's it's a difficult way both ways. We have looked at becoming a community housing provider. That's not a, a short process to go through, um, and that is still an option on the list. So happy to take any questions. Okie doke. Questions, councillors. Councillor Howard. Um, just being part of the working group on senior housing, we did quite a bit of discussion about what could perhaps be added to the portfolio, and we discussed two and three bedroom houses. Uh, since then, I think we've all gone back and asked family, um, people we know, would you share a house with someone else you didn't know? And, and no one has said that they would be in a position to go share another odd person. It's rather a purpose built shared foundation, it's, it's different. This would be sharing it out with someone, no separate kitchen facilities. So I think that's off the table. Given that, I think we need to review our original decision of saying we're only going to look at senior housing. I think should we have other um, housing that might sit with us, we need to look at better options for serving the community with um, two, three, three bedroom housing. So I think that needs um, rescinding that we only look at senior housing. Mm. Okay, Councillor Reedy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Now, three or four questions that I made, please. Uh, I'll see. You'll see. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, I, first thing about, uh, about um, capital expenditure, uh, what we've got in terms of uh, the housing stock at the moment would be depreciated. Now, depreciation is put aside for a specific reason, and that is to uh, uh, up to do the upgrades, place uh, the cars, and what have you. Where that money is going to at the moment, I don't know because um, uh, it's just going to the coffers. I'll park in there for now, at least. Uh, well, so let's just deal with it. Oh, okay. Douglas, or do you have an answer to that? Yeah. I mean, in, in, in general terms, uh, the amount of money we get for rent is not covering the day to day maintenance costs and also putting adequate site for the depreciation point, which well understood. One of the challenges of looking at all the different options is that they each have different financial impacts. And what's one of the reasons I suppose the council was looking to move out of move out of senior housing? Well, look, to the best of senior housing was they didn't want to impact on the rate part, which I totally, totally understand. The reason we've come back and sent you some guidance now is we sort of need to try and hold them down what options we would look at because ultimately the answer and the gentleman made a comment in the public gallery position was and you can't even make a point too we just need to understand what are the costs we have having to fund that today and what are the costs that have a long-term capital nation to them and then this next question of are we funding debt or are we funding appreciation because you so they have challenges if you're trying to fund both of this environment so at this stage there is no pile of cash sitting from an appreciation for throwers. The challenge is we're trying to uh, basically rebuild a financial model that will take us forward. So that in previous time, I uh, prevent the proper council of judgment that was inspired. But it's not being around the bush here. This is really tricky for councils. And so many of them had to move their city house and the trust to try and find alternative ways of funding. So there's no easy solution here. We just need to probably try and find ourselves down to I don't know, maybe two or three and then come back with a some detail of what we're doing there. Because one of my challenges is I've been saying to Chrissy, you yeah, can go away and model 10, 12, or whatever it is, but it all takes time out and just, and just sort of sit it down. Thank you, Mr. Um, uh, I've had some of the uh, 22 papers, you can 22 paper. Uh, the the uh, steering committee, the CFC, the steering group, started in February 2020. Uh, I might count as three years ago. Then we've got um, the September 22 meeting. Uh, today, Council 22, 3.4. Today, Council's on taking full financial evaluation. Each of the options need to be evaluated to establish financial outcomes for Council. Now, now, now I'm looking at today's agenda. Uh, same, same number, June 7, June 1 7, and uh, there's just a few more recommendations that we look at. 
but there's no room for lanterns. So I'm being asked to just uh, draw some straws and um, uh, uh, pick what the acting chief executive should undertake at a high level financial analysis. I was set for the financial analysis on all of them, uh, just like it was suggested back in September. So why can't we have that? Why are we still waiting? If you want to move that way, you can just go to team. As, as, sorry, um, as Douglas said, there's um, quite a lot of work and time and resources that goes into financial analysis. Um, there's also been a change and additional options that have been added. So we discussed it in the working group and it was decided that it was to come back to council. It needs to be a council decision to make. So um, it would have been a huge waste of time to have done it in the last few months and then have additional options <coughs> that may have been more favourable. Um, so that's why we're putting these in front of you, asking for some direction where you would like to put the resources that we have um, and then we can come back to you and a decision can be made. Mm -hmm. Council of Fala, I'll come back. Just going to remind Colin of what he reminded me today. This is the legal stuff. So we think that the good thing is not the intricacies of the planning. So acknowledging the history that, that this has taken a long time to come to the fore and it's a bit of a moving beast in the sense that we had floods, we've had a significant change in our stock given with the, um, the leasehold ones leaving um, and then the Stafford Street and other ones, potential ones, um, potentially an opportunity for them to come in in some form. So it's not a, it's not a, um, it's not hasn't been a static target that we're aiming for here. The paper is not pretending to have all the answers. It's about just trying to refine down our limited resource around defining what it is we want the team to come back and report back on, so we can make some good decisions. So just making that clarity. Councillor Reedy. I think it's to be I'm just not sure what Councillor Barlow is getting that there. Uh, they have a little detail on, on, on asking for some, uh, we're, we're looking for, uh, look, uh, sorry, uh, management looking for some direction, but I can't provide direction unless I know what the uh, actual outcomes are going to be. So uh, uh, I'm not looking at the uh, dollars and cents, I'm looking at um, something to support my. Uh, uh, saying yes or no to any of the option bullet points under option uh, under paragraph two. Right, Councillor uh, Deputy Mayor Basha. It seems to me that none of these options are money making options for the council, and I, and, uh, I, don't, I don't think having having uh, stock houses as, as an asset as a money making venture for a council. It's it's about looking after the community. I just wonder if, if we. If we continue to own them at least them out to a, some provider, um, does that at least the, the cost of that lease, would that be anticipated to cover the cost of depreciation and maintenance of the properties? Or is there no provider that's going to do that? Yeah, really good question, Councillor. Um, I don't mind saying that, um, that that again needs further financial analysis. What we do know from the conversations that we've had over the last couple of years is. Our stock previously wasn't particularly attractive to people. Um, there's a very low number of people that look at leasing out these types of properties. So um, we want to make uh, stock as attractive as possible. Um, and as is, um, we don't have people lining up at the door to, to come in. Um, one of the things that has come through from um, the various people in the working group as well has been that um, we potentially haven't done as good a job as we would have liked to do if we had the resources available. So some of the options include some partial care to um, some of our tenants who need it, just some wellbeing checks, make sure that they are still able to live independently. And if there is a light bulb in the oven that needs to be fixed or something else, and just to give them that social interaction as well that some of them don't. So it's not a lease like just going to um, a normal um, estate agency and asking them for some um, property management options. We want to look after the people in there. Sorry, that's one question. Okay, yep. Is there, is there an option of maybe um, reducing the stock or making the stock that we have more attractive? Um, again, one of the options is um, we could look at buying some new stock and selling some old. 
um, because that would potentially be linked to our case maintenance and it might be uh, easier access for some of our tenants as well. So again, one of the options that absolutely is the councillors to look into. Councillor Howard. It doesn't really help with the workload, but I can't really see not many author listed into my financial um, analysis on because some of the preferred ones are actually having an outside provider, but there's unlikely to be people to stand up on to do that. So some of the favoured options are probably not going to play out. So we really need to do those other options. And just uh, just another comment, I would advise against reducing the stock overall because we do, especially for support, have a really long waiting list. Yeah. Um, and we all know how expensive rentals are and how um, how few the numbers that they are. So we really, really would be disadvantaged in that community by reducing the numbers. Thanks, Councillor Weston. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, just to comment on uh, option two with the TES outfit um, with Queen Street and Stafford Street. Given their high above sea level, would they not quite be suitable for people with walking frames and walking sticks? I know there's steps. I don't know if there's ramps. Um, should they become available? Should the council decide to purchase those for senior housing? We'd have to make some amendments for accessibility. Um, if they were slightly further out of town as well, we may need to look into um, transport options so people select in and out of town as well. Yeah. Uh, who was Councillor Simpson? Just two um, questions then. Um, option 4A, leasing. Now, if council were to lease, it's not going to improve the situation as far as being able to um, get money to upgrade or the people um, in the units being able to have the advantage of subsidised rent. If council still own them and leasing, is that correct? Oh, I saw that. So if council was to still be the underlying owner of the asset, would we still be able, would the tenants still be able to qualify for the additional support and capital upgrades? Well? Um, most likely they still wouldn't be able to apply. So it's just another option out there, but one that would be probably attractive. That's what I suspected. And then in option um, 4B, um, I think a trust on should be added in there because it was always said that if it was a trust that um, we could transfer the ownership to, um, it would give you all the advantages that you needed of people being able to, the, the trust being able to gain money to upgrade and the tenants being able to benefit by um, subsidy and charitable trust or trust be formed. And that was initially there, but it seems to have dropped off now. I think there was a reason for that, but I think to my head it was just that it needed to be an arm's length away for um, the various entities and the organisations to be able to give those subsidies for the other funding options available. I believe that that is what that, that is why that dropped off. I'm happy to get some clarification and come back to you. Well, that's what I mean, just a, a trust. It could be an existing trust or a new trust set up with charitable status. Councillor Eddie. Very quickly, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just going back to uh, uh, September 22 uh, and carrying on from what Councillor Simpson was saying, uh, it was identified uh, that um, it's been a long process, uh, urged this trip to keep pushing to make something happen, noting it needs to go into a trust to ensure the outside money is there to keep it up to and so on. So I do tend to agree that there is a possibility. I'm aware of the answer for government reasons, but uh, they need to be supported again. So I support the issue here. So, please. so 4B. Um, yeah. yeah, okay. Housing provider, I don't know. Did say if it was, if 4B was, yeah, community trust. Got, yeah, community housing provider or government agency or a trust. Yeah. Okay. Let's cancel that on. I think we need to start moving on to yeah, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, I guess the bottom line here for all for those people that are using this housing is that they want security of tenure and they want a, a rent that's affordable. So I, I think by um, passing this motion with the addition of the trust, that we're looking at um, some high-level financial analysis and um, 
I guess, given in that, we'll, we'll need to find out what level of rent is required to match the requirements of the maintenance and the ongoing refurbishment, et cetera, et cetera. So if all of that can come back, and really it will be very, very timely in terms of our long-term plan, that this information, and, and you know, then we can go out to the public as part of the long-term plan and say, well, is this something the public still wants to be involved in? At the moment, we've got a very, very long history of it. And, um, you know, I, I don't see the public saying that we should dis dissolve, uh, devolve ourselves out of senior housing. I think that's going to be a, become a core um, part of council. So I'm happy to move all of those recommendations with the addition of 4B with the trust option. Just caution you that I thought that was what we had discussion around the ability to resource that. So we were looking to like I think there are some here we could simplify. Like from what I'm what you've just told me, um, option three, which is basically to sell the portfolio in the open market through a tender process, is not something that you would favour. So why don't we eliminate it? Well, the high level financial analysis on that would be very very limited anyway. So. Um... <laughs> We need to put it out there. I think we need to keep them all in in terms of the long-term plan because the community needs to decide one way or the other, you know, and we're covering all the options. I don't expect that it'll take a great deal of resource to do a high-level financial analysis on that option or any of the options. Really. Yeah, so you've moved one through five with the addition of community trust or yeah. words to that effect. Yeah, it could be on because basically the same thing. Well, 1A1B talks Option. to talks to Andor. It's moved and seconded, Andrew. Um, let's just open it up for debate, if you like. Um, so I think you've, you've covered your reasons for moving. Um, seconder, do you wish to speak now or reserve your right? I'm happy to speak. You're seconded. You're second, uh, cool. Madam right. So it's been moved one through five. Discussion questions. Uh, discussion actually now, Councillor Howard. Because some of these ones discuss the uh, additional step of Pepper Lane Queen Street, I think we really need to clarify are they actually suitable for senior units? Um, my suggestion is that we look at the long term plan, um, the amendment of I actually, you know, one does work, it's just existing senior units for the first three years of this plan, but we in bringing in these other house we need to sort of understand are they actually suitable for senior housing or do so are they part of the equation? Or they just are bundling all seat. Yeah, so they would be just a bundling seat. Yeah, that's the point. Yeah, so that'll come back in the financial. Yes, yeah, so it's been moved and seconded. So that's noted. Presumably you're a be voting against <laughs> the way it's gone. Um, any other any other comments on this? I'm happy to go ahead with it, but I'm also happy to cancel three because I think it's not really something we consider. I'd be happy to do that too. That's what Howard. Um, as said, it actually very little would need to be input. There's just knowing the market values and what they might raise. So it's it's not a high cost thing. And I think it gives you a benchmark to measure those against. I'll well, speak to the motion as put. Um, I, I think I don't disagree with Graham to a certain extent. I'm kind of feeling as though the TAS housing, Stafford Street, Pepper Away stuff is almost a bundle that sits outside of our. I'd like to see that worked up as a sort of a separate bundle because I don't see it, it's not a natural fit into there. There might be some units of it that might work just from knowing them. So I don't know if that's just feedback, if that's a sensible thing or because um, I, I don't, I don't I'm not a big fan of us getting involved in a broader housing um, provider space. I just don't see us in that role, but uh, that'll be my comments. So um, yeah. I guess we have to vote in favour of this, but I don't particularly agree with all of it, but I'll be voting in favour. Just in my right of reply, Mr Mayor, I guess the reason I'd be in favour of leaving it in there, because I know there's people out in the community are saying, what about that housing up there that's sitting empty? Yeah. If it means that, you know, this report that we're going to get back, this high-level 
um, financial analysis says, well, that's something we should treat outside of senior housing, then I'm happy with that. But, but there is comment out of the community about, you know, what about that empty housing up there? Okay. All right. We'll move to seconded. Final reply. All those in favour? Any against? That's carried unanimously. That's fine. And just a closing note on that, Graham, is, is there advocacy going on in the background at officials level with Taz and others around how we can um, bring some of that housing to the market more broadly by varying the mandate or whatever of Taz. There's just a lot of policy stuff that's got people tied up in knots around what they can and can't do with it outside of council. Right, we move on to agenda item eight. Um, oh, that's the old one, sorry. Oh, yeah, leasehold properties. This one should be fairly straight forward. Oh, that many. This. this is it? Yeah. I'm already whole. I mean, it helps we just yeah. make some adjustments to paragraph 3.1 after the rack routine uh, two weeks ago, but there's no difference. Okay, so this is something that has typically been rolled through um, various councils to try and encourage people to freehold. I understand that. Um, the um, debt collection side of council does use this as an option sometimes to aid, help people get out of a financial situation. So um, any questions on the report, Councillor Reid? Thank you, Mr. Reid. Uh, I'm agreeing with it uh, in terms of that, that uh, we actually dropped it now down to 27 lease on properties. I would have thought we'd be able to nail it a bit closer now and find out why these people don't want to uh, uh, freehold. And um, uh, I'm also aware that we do have some uh, outstanding debt relating to at least one or two of these leasehold properties. So uh, maybe I'm not asking that uh, we get names, names of Sarah, names, names of Sarah, and other number, but uh, at least get some indications for why uh, some people are not wanting to leasehold. So it's all very well saying 20% has been there for some people in this board. Uh, and there's now 27 at home now for whatever reason. I don't, I don't have a problem with that. But uh, can we just get some indication as to why they don't want to be solved? So you can have a phone call or a visit or I'm oh, sure they sure they don't. I'll, I'll just check. Is there 27 different reasons? Oh, I think it could be, but I don't think the question is not the reason. We'll, we'll, we'll write to each of 27 saying we're extending for 12 months of the other we, we'd like to know if some of you, why you continue to hold. I mean, it's a bit of a um, It's of interest, but that's about one of those. But we can ask the question and just see if there might be something else we can do um, in terms of that. But it is a, it is a good chance to I'm just give it the last shape because you did have 130 on a few years back. We're getting down to 27. Just the reason for the adjustment is that we've got three at the moment who are going through the leasehold process. We've got two matters of interest. Um, uh, in the last two years. So there is still a bit of interest there. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, give and, a and the other question around yeah. standing debt. Um, yeah, I have to go and look at the specifics on that. There shouldn't, I mean, the fear of these ones shouldn't be to me. I know that there was a mistake there working with the money. Uh, that's probably one of the figures, but yeah. I don't think it's specific. Councillor Grafton. So if they, um, those ones that haven't brought in on it now, the chances of it, their yeah, market value is going to go up substantially, isn't it? Now, with the redoing of it. So their land values are going to go up 50% or so, and so they haven't brought it into it by now, they're still not going to do all that. Well, that's something that, that, that is an assumption. It could just be a financial thing, but um, ultimately, right now, with um, interest rates, sometimes you pay for library or money in the bank. It's just a simple decision. Is my lease going to be more or less than that? Government? But then again, some people are trying to find the 67,000 they might need to deal with by now. That's we just can't do. So, but I'll, I'll, I'll put a little survey together and just get some options for people to pass into it. Cool. I'm happy to move that uh, we uh, maintain the 20%. And um, have some feedback from uh, management at some stage. 
Yeah, that, that's I'll noted. Do. Yep. Okay. I'll move that to twenty percent size. Okay. Seconded, Councillor Howard. Moved, Councillor Reedy. Any further discussion? Councillor Nalon. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, as one of the councillors that was around in two thousand and ten when this was first introduced, it was a once in a lifetime option, and so that that was the carrot, if you like, um, that that we were going to do it once and once only. And then um, what happened was the date passed. I think we gave a year for them all to either join the, the, the bandwagon or not. And then we got a few late entries. And so the council of the day approved those. And then it's run on and on and on. Um, for that reason, I'm against it. I, I think that um, you know the, the one time that they had, that's how it should have been presented. It's, it wasn't very fair in my view that those that jumped on board and, and freeholded it um, in this once in a lifetime time opportunity then found out that it was actually a every year opportunity, not once in a lifetime. So for that reason, you know, I'm still against it. In terms of, um, you know, the 27 that are left, I don't know the reasons, but I know that if I was one of them, I'm paying $400 lease a year for 21 years. And then I, I get, at the end of it, I get a 20% discount on my purchase price. Why wouldn't I jump on board and, and game the situation? Now, I'm not saying that all 27 are in that position, but there's, a, there's likely one or two that are pretty savvy with how this thing works. So um, in terms of the carrot, there's a 20% um, um, discount on on offer here for the purchase of the property. That's the carrot and the stick is, you know, would the $4,000 um, be dearer than going to the bank anyway, If I even if I had to pay 100% of the purchase price. So I, I, in my view, I don't think we should be offering it anymore. I think we should be encouraging them to freehold, but they didn't take the once in a lifetime option. And so now they've got to pay full market value. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak for or against? Or I'll put the motion. You have any closing remarks? Move it. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll, uh, I'll let it go. Thank you. Thank you. So the motion moved to Councillor Reedy, seconded Councillor Howard, that a 20% sale discount of the independently assessed market value of leasehold land be available to leases to 30 June 2024. All those in favour? Any against? Councillor Nadal and Councillor Grafton against. And I think the motion is carried. Thank you. Right, agenda item. Did you get? Item. Sorry, Jane. I was yep. I got your vote. Thank yep. you. Yep. Still carried. Um, right, the next one is the agenda item nine. Um, the subcommittee appointments. Do we have anything to add to this report? Chrissy or anyone? I'll move. Move. One and two. Yes. Sounds like there's been a reasonable process in behind this. Any seconder? Seconded Deputy Mayor Basher. Any discussion? Want to provide some further explanation or anything? <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, I, I think um, this has been a much fairer process. The, the communities have endorsed it, and um, I just thank everybody to vote in favour. Thank you. I don't think there's too much more needed on this. All those in favour? Any against? That one's carried unanimously. Thank you. Right, gender item 10 is the future of the... We're going to get slayed for this. Marawiddy Hall. <laughs> <laughs> I fear it. Thank you. Councillor Reedy. Before I move, uh, the, uh, the items I just say instructs the Chief Executive Officer. At the moment, we've got uh, Deputy CEO. We can just wait. Acting CEO. Acting. Oh, sorry, what did I say? Acting CEO. Yep, that's been mentioned a few other times, so then just do a search. Yep. Yep. I'll adjust those as necessary to be acting where it went. Okay. Yep. So I'll, I'll, I'll move. Another amendment. We've also got that committee work for the Bank Council. Yes, that's correct too. Yep. Sorry, where that's are we talking? Oh. oh, yes. Sorry, yes. 
Okay. Yeah, so the draft recommendation is that the committee and that has moved to Councillor Reid. I'll read it out in a sec. Um, is, there a, is there a seconder? Seconded Councillor Fella. So this is that the council instructs the acting chief executive officer to undertake an asbestos assessment and demolish the Maferaiti Hall in accordance with all health and safety requirements located on the Maferaiti Hall. ET Recreation Reserve, Part Section 8, Block 3, Maferra ET <laughs> Survey District, Gazette 174, page 2152, and clear the site. That's been moved and seconded. Any questions on that, Councillor Weston? Um, just a bit of history on that. Was that the old school? Yeah. Uh, Councillor Webb. Uh, just a question that came up in some of our community consultation with the annual plan um, about some of the, obviously in the hall, there's quite a good lot of timber in that. There was a suggestion that possibly some of that timber could be sold or used um, to benefit, to go back into kind of that reserve to benefit the community there. I don't know how that works, but they sort of suggested, you know, if there was any it's obviously going to be a cost to council to, to demolish it, but then there's, yeah, whether they could use some of that timber for something, I'm not sure. Can I just get a clarification as to how we would normally handle that? Because... Yeah. 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 The demolition company saying we've well, got asbestos in there, and if not, they would, would rather let it, let it quite go. Or, or and, and would they take all the stuff off? They take it all off. Yeah, normally, for a building like that, there is some, there would be some ephemera if you were an individual wanting to sell it, but for a company like Roscoe to have, have a asbestos site and a demolition site. So what I'm hearing is, is there a desire from the community to somehow dismantle this thing? Uh, that, that's a um, question we were put in our submission to the annual plan, which is obviously not till next week, but was there a possibility that, that could be uh, undertaken by a community group in conjunction with a, a council-approved contractor and then, then the um, timber be sold and then all, all the proceeds from the sale of the timber go back into, because um, obviously, you know, the reserve is not going to disappear and maybe sometime in the future they might want a kiosk for the barbecue or something like that, you know, funding could come from the sale of the timber. Okay, I'll come to you in a sec. You are the mover, so you have all the rights oh, on this. Sorry. Um, can yeah. you just I have a concern with that just around health and safety because the committee's being in such a, an old building that if something went wrong, we would be leaving council and ourselves at, at risk there. So I hear that people would want to get it out, but I, I'm just really concerned with the state of the current building that something might go wrong and I don't think it would be concrete as well. Councillor Basher? I'm just wondering that the cost is going to be roughly 15000 plus whatever, um, you'd want to make at least a zero cost to council. So if the wood was worth more than 15 grand, which I don't know anything about the wood, um, then I'd be okay with it. But I doubt that they're going to get any of $15,000 of wood um, out of the building. Um, Councillor O'Keefe, sorry. Sorry. It's just the channels, like the seats and stuff that actually... In the hall, or is it the like the actual physical structure? I think I think it's the floorboards and that. I think that you know I don't I don't know what the wood is, but some of the community members are what there are a lot of community members that are contractors there. That that's what we're saying that if they was a tendered process and that 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 it's you know assist. Yeah, that's all I'm saying is I'd hate for the uh, agent to want it to get demolished and all this beautiful floorboards to be chucked in the you know. Yeah. 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 That's all. So before we all pile in a car and go up there and have a look at this, <laughs> um, <laughs> Councillor Reedy, is there anything you want to suggest changes to your... Thank you, Mr. Um, I hear what um, Councillor Reed and I are saying, but I also hear what Mike's saying. 
uh, comment was or they could work with the uh, contractor. There's two factors here, obviously, is my suit. One, the contractor won't want to sue there. He's got the health and safety uh, responsibilities. Two, uh, if we ignore their contract and get the uh, community members in, uh, we as BDC have a health and safety uh, uh, responsibility. And it's, it's a nice to have. I appreciate that. But we're going to have to Right. And you say, in my view. Thank you. I'll call out your closing argument. Please moved and seconded. All those in favour? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Any against? So three against. The motion is carried. Thank you. Right. Well, the floorboards look a bit rough, to be fair, Linda. Yeah. <laughs> okay, agenda item 11. Uh, count. <coughs> Excuse me. Council's meeting timetable and appointments update. Okay, now this is the one I've got a conflict in, so I will um, we'll just deal with them um, one at a time. So one is the amended meeting timetable for the 2023 year. Is everyone happy with the amended time table? Can't be the answers, no. <laughs> council the nail on. I saw your hand first. Uh, yeah, um, just in terms of the July council meeting, I see that it's on the same day the local government conference. Is there any way we can, or what's proposed that'll happen on that day, given that you won't be here and possibly some others? Good question. Um, I guess it will come down a little bit to how council chooses to deal with um, the numbers going to the LGNZ conference is provided there's a quorum and and deputy mayor chair then there can be a meeting um, so I mean we might just leave it as it is at the moment and we we'll look to change that after the you know as a, as a one-off which we can do we've got maybe, uh, once we get carried on who's all going to be there Council. So we're moving one to adopt uh, the amended council meeting title for the 2023 calendar year. All those in favour? Oh, second up. Oh, Joe sorry, Joe seconded. Second, I just feel we've got um, three committee meetings and plus add workshops on. Uh, my experience of the last time we did that, everyone was just waiting for the end of the meeting. It was, I don't think it was good decision making taking place. So I'd actually be against. Um, Everything into one day. So you weren't seconding it. Sorry. I will leave. Yeah, hang on a minute. So, um, right, I see what you're saying. The August, looking at August. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Let's. Three. Let's just. Um, Look, it's been moved and seconded. Let's just put it to the vote. If there's other people who agree with you, Joe, will the vote presumably will be lost in the week. <coughs> okay, all those. No, no, I'd, I'd like to say again, same as Joe, for the fact that we're here to make decisions and make sound decisions. And when everything was crammed up like that, the day starts off okay, and then it just goes into this lane. Let's get out of here is the attitude from some members and good decisions aren't made. So I, I think it's foolhardy to turn around and put, it, it may work out depending on the agendas, but most times it doesn't and it's not good decision making. So, And that's what we're here for, for the community to make decisions. And I don't think we're doing our community justice by turning them all up and all the committees on one day. You're against Councillor yeah. Nail. So if that was the case, Mr. Mayor, we should uh, terminate this meeting now because we've been going since Absolutely. one o'clock. Yep. And and obviously we're not going to make good decisions. I I, I think um, you know go, going on even the last um, time we had the three meetings on one day, some of the meetings were very very short. The one I conducted was reasonably short. So um, you know 
I guess it's horses for courses. If we do get a day where the agendas are very, very long for each of the three, we can look at um, splitting them. But I think how it is now, I think is a good compromise. Okay. I think, so I'll speak before we put it to the vote, if you like, and you can have the right of reply if you like, Colin. Um, I think that's a good target to go for that. As I say, every chair has the opportunity or the right with the agreement of the, meet, of the meeting to set aside the rest of the agenda to a later date if they're not satisfied that the information's there or for whatever reason it's not appropriate to consider it. Um, and I just think, you know, conscious of everyone travelling in from all around the place to try and keep it on and other people that are working as well, to try and keep it on a set day as much as we can um, is the intent. So for that reason, I think we'll aim for that. So I'm in support of it. Has moved. Councillor Reedy, closing I words. I agree entirely with what uh, has been said by uh, uh, Councillors uh, Samson and uh, Howard. Uh, there, are, there are times when um, uh, we've got to toughen up and do the hard yards. But the other thing is, uh, we've got some flexibility to be able to move something. You mentioned it before. If, if we look as if it's, um, you know, we're going to be pretty heavy day and you know in advance we could always lose something. So uh, I I I stand by what I say I hear and I sympathize with the uh, comments I uh, still move. Thank you. So with that uh, this is the calendar as tabled here. All those in favor? Any against? Two against, one abstention. Motion's carried. Who's against? Charlie. Charlie. Rosalie. Tony. Stain. Okay, the next um, recommendation involves me, so I will bail out. Please, I don't believe that um, the recommendations require a copy of the trust here. There's nothing to say that the mayor uh, or himself have just to be uh, each trainee uh, needs to be uh, re-elected. There's nothing in here that says it does, so uh, I'm a bit confused as to why that uh, can be put forward. Once you're elected into this particular resilience trust, you're there for, until you are uh, uh, in effect voted out by the board. True, but I think council, it's just to, the council can really put any representative on there who, who happens to have been me because I was part of the establishment of it. But it doesn't, this doesn't necessarily link to a triennium. It's just, well, we could nominate a member of the public there if that's what we wanted, is my understanding. Council needs an, an a person. I don't think it specifies the mayor. It just says a council representative, which for the first establishment of the trustee was me. And there hasn't been a resolution today, Yeah, it? so the problem was we, we that's the part um, that was omitted from the establishment process was actually the paper to council to say this is who council wants to be on there. If I may say, please, Mr. Mayor, uh, bottom of the, uh, that particular uh, paragraph in terms of the uh, BRT, uh, due to an oversight, the former appointment of councils appointing the trust was not concluded in the report seeking council appointments for this triennium. So they are just pointing to the fact that it's to do with the speeding period. Yeah, well, I don't, I don't agree with it. No, I agree. I don't agree. That's the reason, but that's not really what the recommendation actually says. But yeah, I think that part of the report is probably incorrect because I agree with you. Once you're appointed, you're there until you're until you're not appointed. Um, is how the trust deed reads. I agree. I'm with it. Yeah. yeah it's Andrew has to cheer. Yeah, sorry. I'll, 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 so, are you moving the motion? I'll second. Yeah, Graham seconded the motion. Is there any further discussion? No. Was in favour? Thanks. Welcome back to the chair. Another job I've got. Another <laughs> <laughs> job I've got. Thank yeah, you, everybody. Um, that was just an oversight. It was, um, it was yeah, actually not how I understood the trust was being set up, to be fair, but that's how it's ended up. Okay, um, the third one there was to appoint a councillor to the Tutai Pacini Destination Management Plan Reference Group. Um, I've had an expression of interest from Councillor Howard with an interest in being on that group, um, but happy to open it for discussion. If anyone else has. I'll move. Yeah. Councillor Reedy. Yeah. Councillor Samson. Yeah. Councillor Reedy. Yeah. Councillor Samson. Yeah. Councillor Reedy. Ye
<laughs> I think we're getting the effect you talked about, Rosie. So funny. This is getting dangerous. She said, yeah. Diplomat to the end. <laughs> um, I guess I just checked, well, you have expressed interest to me, so I assume you're happy with that, Council Hill. So moved, Councillor uh, Reedy, seconder was. That's Deputy Mayor Basher. All those in favour? Anything against? So, congratulations, <laughs> Councillor Howard. You <laughs> now get a meeting to go to, probably in Greymouth quarterly. Okay, thank you. Moving on to agenda item 12 is the Chief Executive Report. Uh, I'm not sure how much of this you wrote. <laughs> um, so largely put together by um, departing Chief Executive Rachel Townrow. Anything you want to talk to or take it as read? Oh, I believe that can be taken as read. Yep. Um, it's all there, pretty straightforward. Any questions? Okay, I move that we receive the. What was the recommendation? We receive it. More information. Seconded. Councillor Farlett. All those in favour? Any against? That's carried unanimously. Right, the one you've all been waiting for. Yeah, I've got that. It's fine. Let's quickly get this one through. Okay. And item 13 is my mayor's report. Um, so there's a bit in this one this time. Uh, there's always a lot in it, of course. It's the most read report, but um, <laughs> there's some unusual recommendations uh, that we don't always have in there. So this was around the local government New Zealand um, membership. Um, and yeah, just because it's topical, it's become topical to a number of councils um, around the value of that or not. So council, what's in the report, what that um, amount is, for our membership and the reasons why it's a, um, it seems to bring some benefit to council being a part of all of that. So um, that's just for discussion if there's any on council's membership of local government New Zealand and just seeking endorsement that that membership fee be paid. Um, and then the other ones are around the conference coming up in Christchurch this year, obviously that's slightly more um, affordable and easier for Buller to get to, and Council may choose to send additional delegates to the conference. Um, we do have a policy around um, attendance at conference, which limits numbers to me and one other councillor uh, and the Chief Executive. So um, there's a process where Council can um, resolve something different to a policy. Um, we just need to know sort of our reasons for that. Um, and what else is in there? Oh, yep, so that's just to take that endorsement note that that policy is is there and that we're choosing to, to, to or not to agree with it. Um, and res resolve how many councillors should attend and we'll go through the process of um, registering those. And the rest is the Correspondence. I'll take the rest of the report as read. Councillor Reedy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just regarding the uh, next report, there, you attend, uh, I understand that you mentioned it, uh, SLT meeting each Monday. There's uh, never any mention of here. You, you mentioned other uh, activity that you undertake, but for some reason, there's no mention about your attendance at SLT and what involvement you've had in there. Um, Should that not be included as uh, as uh, information for fellow councils? Um, I don't include everything in here because I, I, I attend a lot of internal meetings that I don't record all of them. I meet with various members of the SLT through the week. It just depends if it's something that's topical. It's kind of yeah, just a judgment call as to what goes in really. So the the purpose of the SLT meetings every Monday is just for them to share with me any issues or workload things, you know, things that active pieces of work the SLT are working on and for me to share any questions I'm hearing from the community or, um, you know, um, political things I'm hearing or, 
interactions I've had with ministers or whatever, and what might that what that may or may not mean for the team. So that's the it's just the that's the main point of contact I have with the broader SLT each week. And other than that, it's um, it's just random meetings based on pieces of work each of them are doing. So, Can we move, Mr. Mayor? What do you what do you want to move? There's a number of oh, things. Uh, <laughs> Let's do the first one. Uh, the ball for discussion. And information, move Councillor Reedy. Second to Deputy Mayor Basher. All those in favour? Any against? That one's unanimous. Okay, let's deal with the resolution to renew membership of LGNZ for 23-24 and approve payment of that membership fee. So are you moving? Move to Councillor. Are you going to just do A, B, and C? Yes. Uh, yeah, because they're kind of different. It's just the way it's written out. So let's do two as it is. Because that they are different. Um, so moved, Councillor Farlett seconded, um, Councillor O'Keefe. Mm -hmm. So this is the renewal of the membership of LGNZ. All those in favour? Any against? Councillor Reedy, are you uh, in favour of our membership of LGNZ? I'm allowed. I'm allowed. Uh, a, B, and C are different. Mm -hmm. yeah, different the, matters. It's just not, a, not, a bit of a typo. A, B, C, just At the moment, we're doing two, just two. As written. Oh, just two as written. Yes. Yeah. Then I'll visit the other the other ones. So that's carried unanimously. Thank you. Okay, let's deal with two A. Uh, council notes to the LGNZ conference and zone meetings policy, which is in your report. Moved Councillor Nalon. Seconded Councillor Reedy. Any discussion on that? All those in favour? That's carried unanimously. Um, uh, 2B notes the conference is hosted in Christchurch and this creates a more affordable opportunity to consider additional delegates attend on a one-off basis. Yeah, well, it's just noting it because it's, it's really to do with if they possibly could have been in the other order. It's just if council chooses to resolve more than policy, we need to be able to show our rationale. So our reason for it, and it create, doesn't create a precedent by doing it this way, it just says it's on a one-off basis. We've considered the reason. So moved um, that we're noting that, seconded Councillor Nalon. All those in favour? Any against? So that one's unanimous. And the one that really matters is now a discussion or resolution around how many councils are authorised to attend the 2023 LGNZ National Conference. Noting I've had expressions of interest from Four councillors to stage. Councillor Nalon. Yes, Mr. Mayor, um, this, we've done this in the past. Um, I think I attended one in Nelson um, under the same guise as this, but it was close. And, um, you know, so we had at least four, four of us attended. So I've got no hesitation in resolving that four councillors are authorised to attend. Okay. Yes. Uh, just, uh, uh, Yep. Uh, just uh, cost, sorry, about 7, so it's about 1500 councillor accommodation delegate in 90 or something per, per person to to um, register for the conference early bird and then there'll be accommodation and um, and some limited um, transport to this venue sheer carpool or whatever we do. So it's it's not cheap, cheap. Okay. No, it's been moved. You're seconding. I'll put four. Oh, so you've got yeah. four. Yeah. Four. Council of Sampson. Going to move as to how many wanted to go. It's four than wanting. Enough. It's four wanting. Yeah, but if somebody decided afterwards, that was all. Is that four in addition to yourself? Yeah. That's my understanding of your intent. So, so it's that's four. That's who's been, yeah, that went out to the council. Is the only the only expressions of interest I got were from four. So, um, that moved and seconded. All those in favour? Oh yeah, no. Great, um, Councillor Reedy, you seconded, didn't you, Councillor Reedy? Mr. Nalon moved it. Moved to Nalon, seconded Reedy. All those in favour? Any against? That's carried unanimously. Against. 
Yeah, so I'll get on to Kirsten now, and because we've got to the eleventh to get registered for the early bird, so I'll get on to Kirsten now, and she'll circulate because it's quite a rigmarole. Because when you register, you have to tick all the right boxes and whatever. So um, there's quite a bit to it, actually. Righto. So there's the correspondence to deal with. I think I'm seeking guidance on any of that. Um, there is a letter just been signed off by me in the last day or two in regards to the um, coal town, old coal town complex. Uh, so it wasn't in time to get in this agenda, but that response has been done this week. So a couple of days later than what I've indicated. So on page 128, a letter that you've um, sent um, for Connect and, um, you know, and support. Um, you've got there that they've been in operation for 12 years. Over the past 12 years, the Connect project team have delivered a variety of yeah. well, they haven't been going for 12 years, have they? I think it was more recent. That's the people behind it. So it's um, Glenn Irving and some yeah. individuals. Yeah. Oh, you just note that Ned is an apology yeah. from six. Thank you, Ned. Kia ora. Um, yeah, that's what that's referring to. So the people behind that, the um, trustees who've been active in that oh, space. Okay, it's just that that trust hadn't been going for 12 years. No, it's a relatively new trust. Yeah. That's how I read it. That's how I read it. Okay, move that the correspondence seconded Councillor Weston. All those in favour? Any gains? The question. Oh, sorry. Yeah, um, the run for a hydro. Yeah. What's that about? Um, so that was a presentation of a of a um, that person, whoever the name was, um, to the mayors and chairs, seeking um, a letter of support from mayors and chairs for an application he was doing to Kanoa for feasibility into that. Um, and so, yeah, there's there's. There was not seem to be no reason not to. At the end of the day, Kano will determine the viability or, or not of whether or not they want to fund that. I don't think it. Um, right. We're on to the verbal updates. Nagahu Community Board. That's on the web. Uh, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um... We had a successful, actually had two public meetings um, with our, for some input for our community board submission. So that was really good to see a good group in the community um, coming to engage in the annual plan process, even though it is in, wasn't submission, was it engagement, I guess. Um, probably the main issues from our meeting was is still the service centre accessibility for the front door. That's a hot topic in the community that people are worried about that there's going to be no automatic door. Um, so we're still working through that at the moment and looking forward to the next update. Uh, still waiting on the ramp for the Women's Institute building. Um, it's, it was supposed to be done three weeks from our meeting, but still not, the concrete hasn't been poured. Um, we also had a, a public forum member um, just alerting the council, the New Zealand Motor Caravan Association is holding their 67th national rally uh, in Reefton next year in February. February. So just um, looking for community support, trying to make sure that we um, keep these people in town and on the West Coast, they're expecting about 700 to 1,000 vans um, to arrive and they're working with uh, DWC to see if we can try and keep them on the coast over that month. Um, and they're just looking for council to assist them with help with a temporary dump station in town and helping with their waste disposal. 
And um, the only other thing was that we're establishing a residence hall working group, so that should be up and running in the next few weeks. Great, that, thank you. Yeah. Any questions for Linda? Councillor Webb, beg your pardon. Nope. Oh, yeah. um, Ned has uh, left the building. Um, but actually, I might just take that quick opportunity uh, just to quickly, not that I'm speaking on behalf of Ned, but um, in relation to iwi relations, um, we obviously had our councillor visit to the Marae, um, which I think was um, well received and, and well received both by, um, by iwi and, and I think the participants who attended. Um, I guess we want to gauge the appetite or, or what we do now with our learnings and next steps for council. Um, it's been suggested um, by um, Ms. Trigg that maybe we schedule a workshop with the attendees and, and all the council, but the attendees and, and to workshop out what, um, what we might seek to incorporate into our council practice um, or, or you know, just way forward so that we don't just lose our way on that and that uh, learnings aren't lost. And we, and we just get a bit of a pathway around how we continue need to keep uh, improving in that space. So I don't know, I'm seeing a few nods around the room. Is that a sensible way forward? We'll try and schedule that probably alongside CISC. Um, it's probably where it sits best in July. Yeah, so that's the plan there. August, July or August, based on the new one. So that's just a wee update there. That, that was a good visit. And I think it's important that we don't um, lose sight of that um, body of work. Okay, Councillor Nalon, Regulatory and Hearings Committee. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Um, at the last meeting, obviously, we, we laid the foundation to get the um, two bylaws out, the keeping of animals and the gambling bylaw. And for those that um, took some interest, there was a Sunday programme about the keeping of cats in yeah. New Zealand. And, um, and it was pretty good that they, they had a sort of a bit of a balanced view, uh, both sides of the equation. But I think of note um, that I think our residents will be um, interested in the, 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 the person speaking in favour of the cats was still in favour of neutering and microchipping cats. So um, I'm expecting that um, once the bylaw goes out, we're going to get a, quite a few submissions based on what was heard on that programme. And um, obviously we're, we've had uh, at the last round when we had the hearings, we had a group that were very much in favour of microchipping and neutering of cats. So um, it'll be interesting to see what sort of submissions come back in. In terms of the gambling bylaw, and this sort of um, leads into my other thing about the localities, we met with um, people from the Maori Health Authority on um, last week, and they've got a real interest in um, doing something with the gambling bylaws for councils to do something with that. They're seeing it across the country is as a real um, health issue, if you like, or a well-being issue. And so um, I'm expecting some good submissions to come in um, for that. In terms of the RMA training, um, at the moment we haven't, we've got two places booked in September in Wellington, and we've had expressions of interest, so we've got to narrow that down to two people. So I'm just working my way through that. If it comes down to a selection process, I'm actually going to declare an interest. But if it comes to drawing out of the hat, um, then I'm quite happy to do that because um, you know I, I won't have any influence on um, doing that because I won't draw it out of the hat. But uh, yeah, so if, if those that have indicated an interest, some of you have said no, some of you said maybe I'll do it next year if we can have that firmed up within the next week, we can actually um, get that determined. But apart from that, that's all I've to report. Thank you. So um, feedback to you on the expressions of interest. Yes, You've shared some documents around yeah. what the workbook looks like for that course yeah. and things. So that's yeah. great. Thank you. We've got it. I'll have it back. When you... <laughs> right, thanks. Okay. Um, where are we? Community Environment Services Committee, Council Howard. So um, the CNZ Festival Farm, that's open currently, and in fact, that will be on the Council website or oh, no, sure. um, so maybe we could do a post on the web page on the um, yeah, and it's been shared to the council, it's just the subject. Yeah. 
um, Brendan Bisler and Sarah Seeker is going into stage two of this upgrade, so we'll soon have better access to people, moving over post boxes and upgrade at the library. Installation of the disability ramp going into the Women's Institute rooms and read it and be installed in June. Colton has met with staff and awaiting Kanani pathways to proceed to council. The KMTT WE liaison is doing great work and getting involved in the community. Lots of work is currently being done in Karamea and I know I've been um, asked about further work in Westport. Property rationalisation is moving along and we should have at least lot of properties on the market soon. We're happy to say it's to see now how's the paper today at council. Airport staff are formally um, permanently appointed and the service will be all out there as a piece of um, we've got a great year service for our community. The Canini Library is meeting soon. Eastport Library recently had their windows replaced with safety glass and so they had a more open space available which is a great improvement. The theatre has plenty of shows and was an amazing turnout for the AU8 workshop. And I believe they did a video of that so it's likely to be um, shared at some stage. Jason has been engaging with all the Norman Buller uh, Reserve Committees, uh, except for Seven Bull, and going over the terms of reference. The Youth Voice um, is currently sitting under REAP, who are providing support, but the Youth Voice are organising their own events. We've got 16 students and four adults attending the Festival for the Future on the 7th to the 9th of June. It's an opportunity for them to grow their leadership qualities and knowledge. Dollar One Point Project is taking shape, and it's amazing how the building is hugging the landscape. The funding for the Experience Centre has come through, so it'll be great to be able to tell the local story, and it's going to retain business for longer. Community Hub and Cultural Working Group uh, meets fortnightly on the feasibility study. Uh, I attended the West Coast Regional presentation on Lake Stream, it's the science behind what is happening in the catchment of flood plain. Um, this proposal to monitor for changes and to help build up understanding of what's happening. Um, it's really great to be able to do these studies, but I believe that it's very limited in funding that's coming from West Coast Regional Council to do this. A lot of locals are concerned about Christmas Creek. And a um, very big community um, support to see more of this uh, information evenings, particularly around um, hazards. Vada uh, is very useful in seeing the historical floodplain um, and what creek flows have done historically. Thank you. Cool, thank you, Councillor Reed. Um, so, yeah, may I just ask uh, can we move um, to bar uh, eight up? Uh, Discuss now to allow uh, Councillor O'Keefe just to get on with some things she has to do. Are you leaving? Oh, I've got to get Okay. Is that? Yep, that's fine by me. Um, Councillor O'Keefe, regional transport. It's pretty, it's pretty small because we haven't really had any correspondences um, March, which is a uh, what um, the regional transport so it was pretty much just an induction to, to the team and um, road to zero. Then we did a um, public transport workshop, which was pretty limiting on the west coast. There wasn't really a lot of whole lot of options there, and you know, so looking at Uber and um, models that they were using down Timaru, but you know, it's just that, um, you know people here, population, um, how, how far we spread out. So we get ride sharing, all that sort of stuff really. Um, it's just all bounced, bounced around, um, but it's a tricky one, the old public transport on the East Coast. <laughs> um, yeah, and then also too, uh, around the actual Christmas highway, with James on that, haven't had any, I only had some feedback with him about a week ago. And he's saying uh, there's not really much happening there. It's sort of still going um, to the board internally. The Morgan Hotahi, 
and they'll get back to us in due course whether the long it takes or yeah, a piece of string. So that's pretty much my verbal report. Thank you, Councillor Weston. Can I just add that? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yep. Just add that with the traffic safety, with the traffic safety meeting I went to uh, about a fortnight ago, oh. and um, they uh, brought up about lowering speed limits, the process going through lowering speed limits, like yeah. Carter's Beach or Elmer Road, now that that's sort of developing and all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, Neil Haley was there. So I mean, I sat there. Um, Ulysses uh, running a uh, motorbike safety course here, gold, silver, and bronze, and that's free. So anybody out there that just needs to get on the website with that. So um, the lady that runs ACC turns up here and meets personally with the Ulysses Club here, and uh, probably once every two months. So. Good to be part of that. Um, there were various other things there that probably didn't affect us, mainly down south, southwest and that. But yeah, it's, uh, I think we're going to get a talk from the the secretary. Uh, she's coming. Yeah, yeah. Glenda, she's coming up here in July, I think. Yep. Yeah. To discuss a, a lot of that sort of stuff yeah, and more fun. Yep, she's booked in for July for <laughs> half an hour to talk to council about what the road safety committee does. Thank you. No questions on that. Nope. Okay. Um, Graham, do you want to do the TTPP? Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll do that, Mr. Mayor. Um, so we met on the 24th, I think it was. And um, obviously, you were all aware it's been pretty well publicised. There was a few um, errors in the um, summary of submissions. No errors in the actual submissions, because obviously they've, they've been in for quite some time. but. Uh, summary was done and some of the errors occurred because they used AI, if you like, or a computer to actually pull out keywords, etc. And it didn't, obviously the program didn't quite work properly. So there was some, some errors there. Um, and also, um, you know, with the number of submissions, I think there's 500 um, in the summary. There was um, very little time for people to um, have those um, errors corrected and then go back and start from scratch. So there was a number of um, people that had um, given us the message, if you like, that there were, we needed more time. The recommendation was till the 16th of June and then Mayor Klein moved that we take it till the 30th of June. So um, the submissions, the co-submissions, co if you like, or submissions on the submissions will remain open till the 30th of June. The summary of submissions should be out now the correct summary I think that should have been out last Friday and um, and then people will get a, a month to uh, resubmit. Obviously the, the rules say that if you didn't make an original submission you can't make a submission on the submissions but we have heard that um, the hearing parent panel will be quite relaxed if suddenly people decide they need to be involved that um, you, you may still have a chance. So I just urge everybody to get um, their submissions in. Um, I'm presuming that with the 30th of June date, I think we last meeting we were delegated um, to approve the council's submission, but that should coincide with the June council meeting. So we, we may not need that need to use that delegation. But other than that, um, a little bit of talk about the budget. Um, one of the regional councillors thought that um, you know they should be making uh, provision now for the payment because <clears throat> obviously the cost is rising and you know we're going to be looking at least five million, if not more, by the time the whole process is finished. And um, it was his view that maybe we should start rating the people now. <clears throat> That's not a view that was shared by many. So um, we'll get a a. Uh, Another budget and the proposed budget for the next three years will come up in our long term plan, and I guess um, the regional council's long term plan as well. I don't think I've missed anything. Uh, I think that's very thorough. Thank you. Um, joint committee meeting for the 24th. Yep. Yep. Um, joint committee council ready, but I don't think it's met or hasn't met. Perhaps we only haven't been here. Obviously, at the um, uh, the announcement by the central government, 
uh, regarding the funding that we have met as yet to discuss in the era of all of uh, as you know. Uh, that was a good picture, we're going to get down into detail, but uh, apparently the state has been put in the ground to support the uh, 10 million that was uh, raised or loan, loan funded. So uh, where that is, I haven't seen yet. There's been nothing in the, uh, the press about it, so uh, I've seen no minutes from uh, Legion. So that's, that's, that's a whole thing at the moment. And of course, uh, that, that just great, it's not just important, uh, the press that we've made. You uh, see, it's also going to get up to speed. So there are those, um, those factors that we can take into account. Just in addition to that, the NIWA has now provided <coughs> some very good indirect flood maps on their website. Um, so I encourage everyone to log or up, also the people in the community know uh, the flow to the 100 or 1% flooding level, but you can choose over the month. So, I looked at the other day and I've got 1.7 metres to before I need to start worrying. So just encourage the public to go to the new site. Yeah, nice. Um, and just noting the Prime Minister's announcement the other week, so the, the next step in that process for the bigger flood defence funding is, um, is a re-establishment of a joint steering group, so it's different from the joint committee. Um, and DIA officials are working on um, getting ministerial sign-off on an independent chair for that, and they'll be in touch in the next short period, I think. Councillor Weston. Yeah, yeah, I just noticed on um, yesterday's news that insurance companies are looking at bumping up insurance policies for front line areas, whether we sports included or not, I don't know. We are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I've just had one, my new one come out, and it's, yeah, that's skyrocketed. Yeah. yeah. It's a new report. Uh, moving on, health localities. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, you'll all be aware that the, the project manager that we've employed, or the governance group was employed, ran the consultation with um, the whole of the West Coast in terms of um, you know what people see as the key drivers in well-being, and obviously the number one one that came through was the waiting times, and um, that's at the GP and EDs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's no surprise. And then the second most popular uh, one was the distance to get to services. And not just specialist services either, because um, what's been happening a little bit in Westport and especially in Reefton in the weekends when there's no GPs available, and you go and get triaged, and then you've got to go off to Greymouth to see a doctor, and there's quite a lot of waiting time down there as well, but also the distance that you've got to travel. And then um, we saw it in some of the letters today about um, in your report about the cost of that travel too that, that people are having to endure. Um, we met again on Friday the 26th and under the old DHB, there's 20 DHBs around um, New Zealand, they had a planning and procurement department and those departments are being phased out. And so what we've got is a commissioning person or a commissioning group. And so they're going to come and they will decide what services they will, will be required and how who will they contract. So a little bit of, little bit of a change in the system. Um, and they there's commissioning agents both for the New Zealand Health Authority and the Maori Health Authority. So we met with them on Friday. Um, the, I guess the key point for me was that um, the purpose of their visit for that one was to see what we'd done in terms of consulting with the community and what we were going to do with the outcomes, which is what we're working on now. And um, there was talk that, um, I mentioned it in one of the things that I remember when Mr Little, um, he was Minister of Health at the time, launched the um, prototype, if you like, for localities in Levin, that he said that, you know, what we're looking for is a, to working from the bottom up, and, and reorganising re this health system, not from the top down. <clears throat> and I was told that, you know, Mr Little's speech writers were out of sync with the Ministry of Health people because they were certainly looking from the top down. But we, we really got reassurance on Friday, or I did, especially that um, the community input is really, really important, community and iwi, and, and we must, you know, 
keep our eye on the ball and working towards what communities want. So obviously, um, there was 263 contacts during that consultation, which when you look at the population of the West Coast, is not a lot, but um, there was something like 1,500 or 1,600 points that they raised. So it's an ongoing thing. We still need to hear from community groups. We're still going to reconsult with them. And we're meeting again on um, 6th of June next week. Um, so suddenly there's been some uh, vote health 200, uh, 2021 money that's been made available. And so um, the West Coast is going to get a share of that. So we need to, as a governance group, work out where that might be spent in terms of um, health needs. There is a, a little bit of a um, criteria that it has to be health related, but of course, um, localities are all about well being, not just health. Health is one part of well being, but there are, there are other parts. So I'm going to grapple with that next week. And apart from that, it's all for localities. Sorry, thank you. Question? Oh, just a comment to Graham that um, on that localities, find it interesting because you've got a meeting of everybody coming together shortly. On 29th of June? Yep. yep. And number one was, or well, number two, was the distance. And guess where the meeting is in Greymouth? So everybody yep. else has to travel to Greymouth. So they've taken yep. Italy Scott notice <laughs> of um, distance yep. being an issue yep. because we had a couple that would have gone down there and right two and a half hours yep. each way. Yep. So they haven't taken notice of yep. what has been said. We thought maybe you could have had sort of one West Port or Nakawar or something, not necessarily Karamea, but at least a little bit more. Yeah. Um, a little bit closer. Yeah. And, and I talked to Penny Kirk, who's the secretary for the localities, yeah. and she's well aware that um, you know, a lot of the main meetings have been Greymouth based, and she wants to actually move them around. So, um, yeah, so we may, we may get one in Westport. All right, thank you. Recommendation that we, may, that we uh, receive those verbal updates from all of the aforementioned. I move that way, seconded Councillor Reedy. All those in favour, any against, carried. Okay, moving into public excluded. Yeah, uh, oh, public forum. Okay, public forum responses. Oh, sorry, I just said before we move into public excluded, uh, we were going to discuss the July council date for Calendar and given the light that now we're all going to the conference, I think we need to change the things. Yes. Uh, Five going to oh, yeah. yeah, which is a fairly big thing, isn't it? Um, that can be just done by staff though, so we'll we'll look at that. Um out of that before. We'll have to have a chat about whether we do it the day earlier or something like that. Um, right, public forum response before we go into public excluded. So first we had GC Readmore and um, Brian Jones around the procurement. Um, any particular things you want me to include in the response there? We've had the workshop. Um, I don't know, it aligns yeah, it's with councils. It's not really our procurement process, it's really what companies and other ones know. Well, it meets, it, it, well, it appears to meet policy of council and Katahi. Um, I might work with the team on answering and, and maybe share some of the um, slide deck and things with them around that. Might be, I don't know what else I can add. I think it was a wider issue, the effect on community as to what it can have on the community. Um, sort of putting so much out from outside the district, so many of the contracts to outside the Buller companies. Mm. Okay, so I might be able to flesh out, actually, on that note, we might be able to flesh out some of the work additional work that the local companies have had out of other packages 
um, as we talk, as um, Mike talked about, ten or twelve million dollars worth of work that has come in that's been has gone to the locals over the last two years in terms of flood recovery and um, things like that. So I guess just to illustrate that it's although there is a perception that this issue was is a trigger, there's been quite a lot of work that has come in over top of that has gone out to the locals, um, which is a fair point. Okay, that one I'll okay. work on. Uh, just on it, Mr. Mayor. It, it seemed to me that from what I've heard, it's, it's those subcontractors rather than the main contractors. Exactly. And so I guess we need, we need to give a bit of a shout out to all of those main contractors. Yeah. There's a very good body of people and machines, etc., available. Yeah. And I think reassure that, that none of this, uh, none of the this procurement that was talked about affects the business as usual arrangements they have with West Reef or, you know, the payments they get when they do respond to um, emergency, you know, slips of rocks or whatever. Um, but it seems as though it's very real for them at the moment. There's, there seems to be a dearth of work, uh, you know, they're having to move out of their normal areas, etc. Obviously, um, we heard about the farming downturn, if you like, and so there's not that work available. So, so it's very real for them. It's, uh, you know, all very well saying, well, we've had this many millions, but at the moment they're struggling. Yep. And I think the other factors from what I've picked up, that it's a shortage of work over the country while it appears that there shouldn't be, there is, and this is why you've got the outside contractors prepared to come here, because the work in their own areas isn't there. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll try and incorporate all of that into a letter back to them. Um, Wendy Thompson, the heavy traffic bypass. I don't have dealt with that. Yep. Um, and that, yep. So that's council resolution. She'll be quite happy. Um, and Vern was the same. Alan Donaldson. Um, it's fair to say, Mike, that that piece of work he's referring to isn't unknown or hasn't been not considered by the team. Correct, and it's still being looked at, so um, our water um, coordinator, Roy Wisdom, has already made some contact with um, at the front of over the last couple of weeks after um, Mr. Donaldson came to us <coughs> to, to reiterate, you know, are there options, but what are the costs associated with it? So, yeah. yes, it's been going on for a, for a reasonable amount of time. And up until recently, it's been cost prohibitive. Um, and that may still be the case if you get that. Yep. So, if I was to say that we've actively considered, BDC actively considered this proposal. And uh, still, and still carrying on with that activity. We continue to explore it. As yet, is unaffordable. As yet, there is no budget. I don't know. Something like that. Okay, Jack for Grey Power. Um, it's really just the resolutions on the um, resolutions that further work is to be done on all those options. Graham Howard. My point. I take it you're not instructing me to write to the government to ask them for half of dollar. <laughs> 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 How do we know it's going to make a profit? Yeah, well, we don't. But it's not, it's not something that's on the table. It's not our building. It's not our land. It's not our purpose. Um, the investment is in our district and. We are getting significant benefit out of it already, or some of it is going to Greymouth, but a lot of those builders and things are staying in Punakaiki and surrounds while they're building it. That's going to go on for another year or whatever. Now they've got this second bit of it to do. Um, yeah, so I think it's. Just express that, thank you for coming along and just express that we are getting a lot of economic, you know, we are getting lots of value from it. Um, it's not necessary. <laughs> yeah. Colin, do you have something to add? 
Just to tease something out, just make sure you're still okay. You know, haven't heard from you for a while. Um, okay. We have a break. Yeah. So with that, that's public forum dealt with. Um, the next thing will be to move. Let's move into public excluded, and then we'll have a break as we do that in the public part. And everyone who wants to leave can. Um, so we have. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving in, has moved Deputy Mayor Bash has seconded Councillor Farla to move into public excluded for agenda items 16, 17, 18, and 19. Um, for the reasons there, thank you, Jack. Thanks, Jack. Is there any discussion on that? All those in favour? Any against? Okay, we're in public excluded and we'll have a five minute.